Birkenfeld is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 Nidorov. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. What do you think about this opening? Honestly, what do you think you about You don't have to play knight c3. We can actually put a piece on d2, which is better, because then we avoid the potential doubling of our c pawns. What you have to understand about practical endgames as a whole is that just like in the middle game or the opening, um, you cannot rely uh, solely on these general considerations. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Welcome, everybody. My name is Jan Nipomnyshi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Now anyone can learn and improve their chess skills with the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. The Magnus Trainer app is packed with fun mini-games and interactive training content, playable anytime, anywhere. Get the Magnus Trainer, available in the App Store and Google Play. Okay, so let's send a challenge. challenging nice graphics easy to see oh, what are you thinking about you're looking how it can be the most painful exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay fine fine <laughs>
Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Feeder Candidates after the rest day. Round number 10. The last leg of the tournament, well, almost last leg, is about to start. I'm Jan Gustafsson, and I'm delighted to be back with the legend, Judith Polgar. Judith, did you have a good rest day? Hi, everybody. Yes, and I think it's, it's interesting that one day there is no show going on. And, and my mindset is also different. And I think a little bit also the players can get a relief and a little rest, though, of course, in the back of their mind, for those who are really fighting for something serious there, it must be very difficult. But I think for them also, it, uh, it means that a little tranquility, at least they can go for a walk, they can love, they can watch some series. They have their techniques how to get away from the tension and uh, their thoughts of the game and preparation. At the same time, of course, let's face it, everybody is preparing like crazy. <laughs> but still, at least they don't have to play a day. So after uh, every three games, they do deserve and they get a free day. So what do we expect today? Do we expect more bloodshed? Or will the guys that aren't fighting for tournament victory anymore say, okay, enough is enough, I'll play solo? I think nothing is enough. Everybody is going to be fighting out. They all know that they went there to one of the greatest city in Madrid, where obviously there is not much time to enjoy the, the life of Madrid, but probably in the evenings the, they do. They eat very well and they have nice atmosphere. But at the same time, they've, they knew it, that they go there to fight. And basically, for some, it can be uh, the most important tournament in their life. Yeah, let's see what pairings we have today and do a quick round of predictions. Rapport versus Ding. I can guess your prediction. Of course, Rapport wins. I will say I have to go with, with 0 1. Ding. Wow. Ding has to make a comeback. I understand your point. We have Duda Caruana. Caruana wins. Mm -hmm. I understand your point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. I'll go draw in them. Ah, uh, go back. Mm -hmm. I understand your point. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry. Ah, I can. I can hear myself. There's some echo. Is it? Sorry. Sorry, it was my mistake. Ah, okay. <laughs> Nepo Rajabov. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Draw. I, I think it's just draw here. Yeah. Draw. And Nakamura Alireza. That's an Ooh, interesting one. Oh, that's fire on the board. Firuza wins. Oh, okay. I'm going with 1-0. Wow. Hikaru said, okay, the tournament is more or less over, but there's still five games to play. But I'm not sure we can believe him. If he wins today, he still has a chance. I think he'll be motivated. There we see the openings. Ali Reza going for the Sicilian. Yeah, fighting spirit. C5, knight of three. And back to the knight of D6. Yeah, there he goes. Well, it didn't work out very well against him, against the Napo in the earlier round, I must say, but probably he had time to fix it. Let's find out. Also curious what Hikaru is going to choose, if he goes for a sharp open line or if he plays bishop b5 check, which is a big move nowadays as well. But what's the point to go solid? No, it's, it's a good move, I would think. But d4 on the board More. and you get your wish. The real fighters are out there. <laughs> we'll find out. Knight takes. Um, what do we have? Nepomneshi playing the Catalan. That's mildly surprising because he's not really a D4 player usually. So to do that in this situation when E4 against Rajabov, you probably get a draw. I don't know. I have a feeling this will be a quick draw. You think anyway he wants to play so solid that he doesn't mind the pick draw? Yeah, that's that's my hunch. I could be wrong, of course. Uh, well, let's find out. I'm not sure. I think maybe he wants to try. Because with Rajabov, you never know, of course. He makes mistakes. He won his first game in the previous round. 
which was very important for him. And we can say that the only player who haven't won a single game yet, it's Jan Christoph Duda so far. Yeah. So the classical mainline of the Catalan on the board, D takes C4 played. We've seen Rajabov deviate from this against Mamed Yarov in the last round of the Norway chess tournament where he played Bishop B4 check, but now he's back to his old system. DC4, Queen C2, where Black can try B5, which Rajav played against Magnus, these long forcing lines after B5, A4, Bishop B7. But I think the consensus now is that they're not that much fun for Black. And Pomnishi also lost a game there against Wesley. So maybe Rajav just returns to his old ways with A6, A4, Bishop D7. We'll find out eventually. Yeah, it's fun to see these old lines. Oh, what a boring line Hikaru is playing. Look at this. Oh, he didn't go for... Uh, he didn't get okay. the wish after all. But, this but is okay, a, Bishop this E3 is he played. Bishop E3 he played. So you so. still give him half a point on the fighter's index just... <laughs> no. Well, I completely understand knight F3. I mean, I was playing this kind of moves also. Just means white will castle kingside most likely. Yeah, bishop c4, castle. Well, it's uh, it's kind of a provocation from Nakamura, I think, that he, he wants Ali Reza to somehow to sharpen out things, but this is not the line where black can do too much, right? This is a tricky line because it's very solid for white, but for black it's not that easy. I always liked it. It's not supposed to be very much. But especially, as you say, if you try to mix it up with black, you, you can run into trouble. So I quite like the... The choice practically. Yeah, Let's not see so what Ali Reza choice. does. Bishop e7 is the main move here. Sometimes I play queen c7 to stop bishop c4, but I think it has fallen a bit out of favor. But it's Isn't more it? that it's uh, it's the mindset has to change for Ali Reza because uh, when you think about neither, if you don't want to go into the solid lines, especially we've seen with Ali Reza that he's ready to play the sharpest, really the sharpest lines, right? Because he calculates incredibly well, and that's where he feels comfortable. So now it's not that he doesn't know what to play. It's just he has to switch his mind that, okay, now it's going to be the, the more positional, talking about the d5 square, solid. No, it's not going to be fire after all on the board. Maybe later. In the Pomnishi, Rajabov, b5, a4, bishop, b7 is on the board indeed. So Rajabov still thinks this is solid enough. And we'll see how ambitious Nepomnishi is. I still think draw is imminent. The point of this is after A, B to play A6. Now you can't take on C4 because A takes B5 is unfortunate. Attacking the queen and the rook. So white takes here usually or plays knight C3. Usually they take, and now you take the pawn, and then black tries to prove he has enough compensation, which is not obvious. But if you but think about it, uh, usually Napo is on the other side in these kind of positions. He likes to sacrifice pawns. He likes to get the initiative. And uh, he's not the one who likes to be on the, on the passive side. Or am I wrong? I don't know. I don't think Black gets that big an initiative in any of these lines. Usually it's more like trying to prove it's a sort of positional draw that even if everything gets exchanged, the C pawns gets exchanged for the D pawn. White can't really use the B2 pawn. And I, th I would guess he would rather be the side with the extra pawn. But he did not play B takes A6. He played the other move I mentioned, Knight to C3, which indeed says, I don't want to be a pawn up. I want to be slightly, slightly better in these lines after AP. You see? Takes, takes. This is what I'm saying. He, he's not interested about the pawns necessarily. He wants the initiative. That's what he wants. You are right. He, he, he doesn't like to be pressed or anything, even if it's, uh, if it's not the completely the best. It's well, not... they're both, both critical moves. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, of course, it's both, both are completely right. We'll find out. Knight C3, A, B. Okay. Let's move on to Duda, Fabiano. Oh, and it's a structure I hate again. <laughs> it's 
bad news for Fabi. Very tough to win here. Rookie won, and Fabi's not in the mood to repeat his H6 G5, which he played against Nipomnishi. Understandably, if your opponent's prepared, you probably don't want to want to do this every game. But Castle's H3, and he goes for the direct bishop e6, not the quote unquote classical plan h6 rook e8 bishop e6. But once again, we get the structure, like in Ali Reza versus Rajabov. And yeah, my opinion hasn't changed. I'm surprised. I'm sure Fabi will have done. His homework diligently as usual, but I think it's going to be tough to win if Duda doesn't allow anything direct. White plays knight pd2, knight f1. Don't forget two. that I Maybe think Duda three. for sure he would want to win this game. Of course, yeah. he, will, he will try everything to do so. At the same time, he's in a very bad uh, shape. I mean, he made half a point only out of the last four games. So it is, at least with me, it was like that when I had something like this. And thanks God I didn't have it very often. But when you have something like this, you're confused about yourself, I think, that you're losing your self-confidence. You're not sure whether should you be taking risk or should you be extremely solid. But once you have an opportunity, which you don't understand, why shouldn't you take or sharpen the position a little bit or, or play an interesting idea and then... You're just having this, this confusion with yourself. And that can be, be beneficial for Fabiano in such a position if White really wants to create something, right? He doesn't want just to play something and, uh, and uh, simplify everything. I was expecting this move, by the way. It's mm -hmm. typical Fabi move, and I like it. The knight is still back in B1, so it's not so easy to... I mean, Black Knight, if he goes to F4... Maybe even he will be going knight e7, knight g6, the other knight as well. Yeah, this is the position we had the other day as well. No, with knight e7, maybe the move order was slightly different. Or the queen can be brought first, queen e8 or queen f6. Yeah. Then the but isn't this a better stuff. version than usually it is for black? How was the other game? My memory is letting me down which which game was that again it was ali reza was versus ali reza Rajabo from round seven no? uh -huh, let's Eight? see oh yeah hmm. ah, he, he had h6 so yeah fabi has a better version he hasn't played h6 yet and went at h5 directly yeah okay well it can it can end up very similar though h6 is absolutely not not an important thing. Moreover, I would ask you, what happens if black goes knight f4 and plays rook f6? Big decision for Duda already. Bishop e3, also possible. Well, that's a safe way. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, never against taking him. But they usually don't take it, no? I don't know. I like it. Okay, mm -hmm. takes back rook. Okay, rook f6. Yeah, I'm not claiming a direct win. <clears throat> and the usual stuff, knight goes there, rook a2. I don't know, queen e7, rook f8. But what hmm. are you going to be playing for with white queen f7? You think I'm in trouble? Well, I don't know. Treble maybe is a strong word for uh, this position. But yeah, it's, it's a usual question. If black can make something happen quickly here. I mean, look at I think the future so. belongs to a, belongs to white still. One day, B5 and D4. That's that's the hope at the very least. We'll see how they handle it. Maybe Fabi has some other idea. Yeah, I'm curious because he usually has very direct. You know, I have ideas another idea. Things, but... What happens if I go nuts? And after knight d2, I go knight f4. 
knight f1. Or I shouldn't dare to say something like that. I was thinking, if is it possible to go g5, h5? Oh, yeah. It's on brand for Fabi. Bishop. H5. What's the most chicken move I can think of? Yeah. <laughs> Queen E8. Interesting. We'll find out. I'm not ruling G5 H5 out anymore. I'd be I'd be surprised, but it's so good nowadays. I, I can say any move practically. I mean positionally looking bad moves. Nowadays, nobody tells me immediately that come on, go back, don't tell such a crazy things. Because it just happens every day, right? Yeah. I would never dare. Um, but also, I think we've become more open to, to anything with anything. G5, H5, H4 in every <laughs> position. True. No, because of course, if black has enough time to replace his uh, queen to g6, to double on the f file, then why should it be so bad, right? Yeah. Knight b2 is on the board. So let's see what Fabi has cooked at home. I'm very curious. What is the follow up? <clears throat> He's also not forced to go knight f4 yet because, yeah, I don't like giving this option that the bishop Maybe. can take there. Like you could. It's yeah. true. Maybe he just wants to have his knight there to stop the G knight g3 possibility. So after knight f1, queen e8, let's say. Yeah. Knight d2, queen e8, knight f1, queen uh, g6. Yeah, stuff like this, as usual. I suggest putting the knight here. And I don't know. Maybe try to double rooks. And at least I don't get my favorite g3 setup anytime soon. Although, yeah, the white position, it's very, very resilient. Fabi, what do you have in store? Yeah, he created this image of himself, right? That everybody is expecting already that what kind of special idea has been developed in his lab laboratory. Yeah, although this position, it's hard to come up with anything too shocking, no, because the structure is so is so fixed. That's why I'm a bit surprised by the choice, but maybe he just thinks it's the best line in this move order. Because the move order is also important. White went h3 early, which you don't always want to have against bishop e6. Like if white plays, let's say, b4 here, then after bishop e6, you probably try to do without h3 and play rook a2 as a move, so that later sometimes you can still have the pawn here. So maybe he just thinks this is the way to go. We'll find out. Let's have a look at Richard Rapport. Yeah, what's going on over there? I read a big article about Richie. I think yesterday he was on the on the starting page of the German newspaper I subscribe to, Die Zeit, which is a big German newspaper, mm -hmm. and it said the new chess idol Richard Rapport, and they call him a rock star because he wears his cool cool sunglasses <laughs> and. He has all his fancy suits, and they say he's the favorite of the masses. But Richie, you know much better than me. He's not really someone who will enjoy the bath in the masses that much. No, he, isn't he a quiet guy who is more for himself, or how do you judge it? He's, he's a very interesting personality, I think. Usually people like him when they're around him because... Yeah. 
he's uh, not acting that he's uh, he's something uh, special contrary usually he's he's somehow more on the pessimistic side and and that's the very strange remarks he's uh, telling about himself about his play and so on and so forth but um uh, yeah, but he's a very special character by the way he looks also, right? That he's, he has his long hair, uh, also sunglasses, different jackets. So he, he gets into this image that uh, he, he's, what is his dressing code and, uh, and what kind of openings and unexpected creative ideas he's playing. Though I believe that uh, lately he, he became a lot different kind of uh, player than he was, let's say, five, seven years ago. And this is also the reason why he was able to stabilize himself on the very top. And, uh, but for example, he's not afraid of any of the guys, I think. It's, uh, it's simply he goes, he plays, and uh, he's ready to play his own uh, uh, strange moves or, or very common moves. But I think he also has periods when he's working harder and one uh, he's working not so hard, maybe. But uh, I don't know about that, who he's working with and, uh, and how is he handling this, this event. But I know that he was extremely happy, of course, when uh, he got to know that he really qualified, even when it was not 100% sure, but he just won that tournament, uh, <clears throat> what was it, Grand Prix in, uh, in Belgrade. Then, uh, of course, it was huge. That uh, that he won, especially in Belgrade, where he lives there. Oh right, right, right. Of course. And uh, so it's his uh, second hometown. <laughs> where's he from in Hungary? He's from Budapest, or where? Where's he from? Uh, no, he's from outside. Uh, actually, now I, I I don't remember okay. which city, but he's outside of, of Budapest. And it's interesting that he has three uh, other sister brothers, and actually he's the one who plays chess. The others are not uh, not not playing at all. Same like also, in your family. Sorry. Same as in your family. Not the same because uh, yeah, it's like. Uh, but the father, his father, is a big enthusiast, a big, big, big chess fan. All the time he was. Uh, I remember once uh, he was picking me up from another city because I was going to this chess school, which uh, is in Hungary in the Maroci. A chess school where they have talented kids uh, sometimes or they had I'm not sure they have it now but they had sometimes weekly training sessions and Richard was part of that also and then uh, his father picked me up from another place and then I went there to give a chess lesson to the to the talents and uh, yeah you could feel that the father had all the determination and dedication that Richard will be there and he's right because he's there in the top 10. There he is indeed. And he's been around for a while too. He's 26 years old. I think I lost to him in 2011, maybe. He was 15, but he was already very serious grandmaster. I don't know about his rating, like 2600 and very, very sharp. Back then, he also still played completely mainstream openings. He just crushed me in some Queen's Gambit mainline, calculated incredibly well. So you could already tell he was... He was gonna be very special. Well, he was. Uh, he was very much addicted to chess. It, it was very clear that he is just incredibly passionate about the game, and uh, that's what he was doing. And that's the only thing he cared really about uh, about the tournaments, about the trainings, and everything. His whole life was around that, of course. And um, so he's he's a very very special character. He's, but for example, he doesn't like to give interviews at all. No, that's what that's what I meant. He's more, yeah, shy yeah, with the public, the media, no? Like, yeah. I don't know why, because some time ago when he was a teenager, he gave interviews, mm -hmm. but he had a, a team around him somehow, a PR team also, who was doing a lot of things. And then somehow at one point he decided that it's not interesting for him to give interviews. And uh, I think abroad, in abroad, and also after the tournament, during the tournament, where it's his obligation, he's just fulfilling those. But when it's not uh, obliged and it's not part of the deal, 
just like that, let's say, then uh, he's not the person who is uh, willing to give his interests. Well, why to do so? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Let's have a look at his opening. So he plays the Spanish. Ding sticks to his guns as well. Ding always plays a6, knight f6, which is, of course, an excellent setup. Recommended in my chessable course. But there's my usual criticism that Ding is easy to predict because he always does this. But I'm very happy that he's not playing the Berlin. Finally, you know, a top player is not playing the Berlin. <laughs> No, nah, come on. Magnus played this in the World Championship match. Like, I'm. Yeah. No. Marshall's still going strong. Yes. And D3, played by Rapport. Not interested in comparing notes in the main lines here, but D3, it's a tricky move. We've seen the trend in the Berlin as well. Of course, it avoids the open Spanish, which is a lot of theory. And B5, Bishop C5 is a typical reaction. Bishop G5, that's the move to mix it up, saying. Richie wants to play a sharp, messy position, always provoking this h6, g5, and the bishop drops back here. Things get very complicated. Well, and nowadays these provocations work pretty well because many of the people uh, give in to the temptation to, to do all these moves, right? h6, g5. Yeah, it's principled. But I think 10 years ago, people just thought this was bad for white to put the bishop here because it's out of play and black has this built-in attack. But now, once again, Things have become messier. And in many lines, black is so solid if you just play the main moves or the standard moves, castles. Black plays h66 castles. So this is really the way to spice it up. They're following a game by Fabi where things got very sharp. G5 was played here against Fabi. Karana Burke, G5, Bishop E3, G3, not h5. And it became extremely messy. But Ding has his own idea, and he played c5 here. Also very logical, after you played knight a5, it's a typical follow-up. But it's new in this position, which is not a very common position. Yeah, somehow I have a feeling that it's really different ideas are really merged in this game. They're playing the Chigorin and the Arkhangelsk and the Italian. <laughs> And Rapport out of book after this move, c5, which is logical, but yeah, as mentioned, g5 was the other move. And Rapport is not trying to win in the opening. with him, you never know. Even, especially when you get the opportunity to talk to him, you simply never know what is the opening that he believes in, which direction he wants to go. He's just keeping this uh, this tension that nobody knows anything about him and practically that you can you can expect anything from rapport right that that well i can wake up and play something which i never played before let's say somehow he has uh, this image yeah we'll see how it goes for him today let's have a look at the other games here after c5 he's thinking i guess Knight b2 is a normal move. Then, of course, you have to take this into account. I'm not sure if pawn to d4 is already an option. Could also be. Typical. Yeah, what happens if d4 immediately? Not sure. I guess we take once. Takes, takes. Knight take c6. Bishop. And now, do I have to go knight c6? Well, I have to calculate g5 in every position, but here I'm not sure. Makes makes a ton of sense. So yeah, knight c six, but then d e is quite a bit better. Why would it give advantage for white? Maybe it's not much. How do you recapture with a knight here? Pawn. Uh, it's not a little something. I take for which side? For what? Okay. King d eight. Knight c3 you want, or mm. what? I mean, once I yeah. can play bishop g4, well, now maybe you can go knight d5, right? Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I'd be happy. A4, B4, 95, the usual stuff. Well, but, possible. And if instead of CD4, Queen C7? Takes, takes. I've never seen something like this in the Rye Lopez. No, me neither. Yeah. Incredible. No idea what to do. Just develop. Very strange position. A4 is there, a D5, but I don't like D5. In Very the... curious what Ding wants. Well, okay, but D4 was not played yet. No, no. Let's see. But uh, Richie is thinking heavily what to do. Yeah. All right, moving on. In what happens in uh, Jan's game? <laughs> the first Jan went knight bd2, knight f1, queen f6, and I oh, know queen f6 not on the board. This was just our line, knight f1. So this position is on the board. Ah, you mean Jan Christoph's game? I yeah, thought... no, I'll, I'll get yeah. to the publishing. No okay. worries. Um, and here, yeah, I think they're still comparing notes. <laughs> I've seen this position before. I'm curious if the game will last or if they will find some way to move back and forth here. But the bishop was standing on f4 before. Yep. We'll Do you think uh, all the squares? Bishop, if queen c5, then the bishop stands better on d2 or f4? I think it will stand wherever it makes the queen move again. So you think it's going to be that kind of draw? We'll find out. But maybe I'm too pessimistic. Like, I know this line is sort of tricky for Black to play as well. He has to be a little careful. And it could just be that this is Jan's preparation and he will make um, whatever move to, to continue. The queen goes back. White, of course, his options can play rook a1. But yeah, so theory battle. We'll see. Well, can black go bishop b4 if I don't want to move away with my queen? Which position after bishop d2? No, yes. I guess you're threatening with knight d5, so I don't want to have that huh? yeah <clears throat> I don't see what's wrong with it Jan is walking around very happy with his position mm -hmm. played very fast and Rajabov is thinking he spent already 23 minutes. Yeah, he got ambushed. Didn't expect one d4 if this is. This is not a quick draw. Of course, this is not the line you predict from Ipomnishi, who's played e4. Also, knight of three, g3 once in this tournament. He's become more broad, which is it's good for him. So this position, what do we do? D1 takes. Yeah, knight c6. Uh, now e4. But e4, bishop c3. Takes. Already a mess. Takes. Can we take Takes here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And takes on c6. This looks unpleasant. No, well, to say the least. So knight c6 is not possible. Black should be going something knight bd7, let's say. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
we before do this. Bishop mm. B7. Is this hanging? I can't calculate. Bishop F3. Yes, doesn't work, does it? No. Uh -huh. Yeah, then E4 makes no sense. It's weakening. What else is there? Sometimes you can take, but I'm not sure it's very much. Oh, e takes. I mean, the B2 pawn is pretty much of a great target. Say bishop somewhere. And we're here, g5 first. Bishop f4. Well, it's a good question. What is this? Well, knight d4, knight f5. Yep. White has some activity. Bishop makes a move. Bishop a8. All the way back. Why is it better on a8 than, let's say, on b7? I have no clue. I vaguely recall having seen this position before, but I can't explain it. Maybe there's a reason in some line. Maybe it's just the first, the first engine move, the usual, and I also don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see, just to see what the computer says. No, it says bishop b4. There you go. Let's let it run, though. Uh, bishop b7. And probably we get there where it's Bishop. Yeah, right? that's what I'm waiting for, but <laughs> not there yet. No, oh, back to Bishop B4. Uh, bishop B4, Bishop B7. The debate is still there. Come on. Go Bishop A8. No, no. Bishop B4 is back in business. Bishop B7. It's funny. I haven't seen this, that uh, the engine is alternating continuously for some time. No, at lower depth, it does it quite a bit. Then it will it will slow down. But no, it's still still team bishop b four. All right, engine and Polgar agree on bishop b four. <laughs> but Rajabov, oh, bishop b seven is back. So, yeah. Compe also doesn't have an answer why it's better on A8. It feels more natural on B7. No, you're, you're worried well, it will some... get hit one day in some random line, but I don't know. Maybe there's some advantage. Well, usually the problem can be that uh, knight G5, right? And on H7, but I don't see why uh, it would be in the near future when the F6 knight is standing there and nobody will be able to <clears throat> eliminate that. Okay, so in general, I think it's a good scenario for Nepomnesi. These positions are safe. Black has to be a little careful. Black can never be better, but he should usually usually equalize, as mentioned. I've done some clicking here as well and didn't think it was that promising for, for White. In the Hikaru game, Knight to c6, isn't that a rare move? Still in theory. Knight c6 is rare, isn't it? Or at least to me, this doesn't look very common. Well, I guess bishop e6 and bishop e7 is more played, right? Yeah, bishop e7 and queen c7. Knight c6, I'm surprised by. But okay. Either... Uh, Ali Reza has some deep stuff here, or he was surprised by this line and he wants to get out of Hikaru's preparation, which is often very 
targeted as we've seen down the main line. And Adriel is saying, no, no, no. The problem, of course, is that knight c6, you can no longer cover this square with the knight. And here after knight d5, where we have to think about bishop b6. Well. Let's switch off the, the comp, the bishop a8 experiment didn't work. Well, rook c8 is possible. There is no rush to take on d5. Yep. If takes, bishop takes. Once again, the knight is slightly misplaced now for these lines. I see seven. So let's see rook c8. What does white want? Just bishop g5? Bishop e7. Yeah, takes. Takes, takes. This type of stuff I've seen in these lights. Uh, no one moves c3 castles. Very solid. Well, even knight e7 is possible generally. Every line, you end up with these double pawns. <clears throat> okay, but later on I play d5 and simplify. If I want to be boring, I can... I can Rook c5. Okay, one day I'll have to. <laughs> takes, takes. Hmm. Trying to punish it will probably backfire. Yeah, you want to go queen h5, but is it a big deal? I can go knight g6 if I want. Mm -hmm. Queen h5, mm. king f7. <clears throat> yeah, no idea. Again, kind of a funny pawn structure. I would think white is white is better here. Maybe bishop e6 is a bit much. Maybe just castle. <clears throat> Where is the king going? This I find hard to believe. Well, it's playable with white, but do you think it's a big like, thing? I don't know. I like white's position. Here. Let's say D takes E4. Let's say I'm playing very simple. Takes, takes. takes D4, Bishop D5. <clears throat> Bishop B3, Queen D5 was just as good. I take on Queen D5. I'll be boring. All of a sudden, Hmm. I don't know where to go. H4, E3. Let's see. Maybe. Queen E6. Rook C6 also not bad, by the way. So many options. Okay. I give up. Um, it's not let's so see what obvious they do. why it should be so bad for black. The king. Oh, look what Ding is doing. What has he done? Provocation. Ah, here we go. Five. He went knight bd2, not d4, and then he went g5, knight h5. For some reason, I have a feeling that this game is not going to end in a draw. And Ding is still playing quickly, yeah? He's done, he's done homework here. Because let me look up there. There was this Fabi game where G5 was played directly, and Fabi had something very, very sharp. Ah, well, yeah, it was different. It was G5 here, Bishop G3, 
knight h5, a4, and then the board was on fire very quickly. I remember Fabi was showing some analysis that he had some very deep stuff here. But okay, it's a different position. The knight is on that, that was not bad because, for example, after rook b8, knight b5, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think knight bishop a6 was the game and it continued with some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it was dangerous for black. So mm -hmm. ding deviates. With g5, not h5, hit now. Huh. Still in his prep. Richie has to figure it out over the board. Good news for him is he's very capable of that. The bad news is it's never fun to be ambushed. What should he do? Yeah, that's a big question. Does black want to go knight g3 or knight f4? Probably knight f4, right? <clears throat> Not sure. I guess it depends. Maybe bishop g4 sometimes. It's a pity he didn't play d4 before. Yeah, d4 looked critical. Maybe knight b3 is a move after knight, G, knight h5. Uh -huh. I was also wondering. I wasn't sure if black just goes away if that. But after that, knight e5. Ah, oh, this works. Yeah? Uh -huh. Knight takes, bishop takes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, then it's a tricky move. So we maybe now we have to take and then go back. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, I'm not sure if knight g3 is part of the plan, but at least stopping this. So maybe I don't go knight b3, but I change my mind. And after knight h5, I go rook, a, rook e1. <clears throat> I'd rather start re replacing my knight to e3. Are you in time? I'll try to checkmate for change. Takes h. Okay. You're playing very aggressive today. What happened? <laughs> Pawn is on G5 already. There's no way back. Hmm. This looks nice, no? H4 is coming. Hmm. A3. Richie is not in a hurry. He well, prepares oh, b4. Actually, probably it's a good move b4, bishop b3. Right? See, can I do the same? Take an h5. b4. Not sure if we take, I guess not. That's a six. Bishop b3, h4, you just go. I guess so. <clears throat> Bishop d5. Bishop d7. Yeah, I was annoyed that g4 is possible then, but we have to live with it. <clears throat> Still doesn't look too bad.
or should we take a time out here? Do I have time? It's a bit, a bit artificial. I like it for black, you know? Yeah, it's scary. It's very scary. Yeah, for Shipti 597. I don't know what kind of counter play White has. But why does this look so good for Black? Because the bishop on a7 instead of e7? I don't know. This bishop g5, bishop h4 lines is always incredibly concrete now. If Black gets the tempo to start rolling. Here with the bishop here, yeah, it's even even weirder. Is this crazy? I understand. <laughs> I was pretty, just about but, to ask also. <laughs> at least after not liking your h5, h4 after hg. Yeah, at least the king is a bit safer. And, and on the f file, yeah. some things can happen possibly. Maybe that's his idea. Not what you're supposed to do usually here. Yeah. Because now this this kind of stuff. But before we cannot play. Oh, I blended the bishop, sorry. <laughs> That's the trouble. Yeah, <laughs> oh boy. So we have to everything saying spend the time on King H1. So we need King H1 first, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Four. <clears throat> takes. Well, takes. You can also try G four. Yeah. Still a bit scary. Hmm. Let's see. Is this trackmate? The field. I don't know, but I take on g3 and takes in g4. Yeah. It's, doesn't look very tempting for white, does well, it? Well, <laughs> rook h2 is threatening. It's not like white is up queen. Nah. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. So it could get messy. Yeah, interesting position. Doesn't look very drawish. That's good news for Ding, who's in on 50%. If he manages to win today, all of a sudden he's plus one and not that far away. Probably well, still a bit late. We were discussing this, right, in the yeah. previous round that he won his first game. And you never know. I mean, the a player of Ding caliber starts winning, anything can happen. And yeah. of course, all players know, no matter what kind of form he is, he can always get back and start playing very well as his real strength. Yeah. Even in this tournament, like, of course, the score was disappointing in the first round game was very bad against the Pomnishi, but it felt like he had chances for more points. No, his class is still there, just his. And you know, yeah. the next round, Ding plays with Black against Caruana. So actually, if he starts winning, then anything can happen. Well, it's a tricky situation for Fabi. No, let's say Fabi is plus two and Ding is plus one, and you're white. Like, uh, how do you approach it? No, it could still get very interesting. Yeah, I mean, we are going to have some great games of uh, Ding. As in the last round, he plays against Nakamura. Huh? Before the last, he goes with uh, Firuza. Round 12, he goes with uh, Rajabov and uh, tomorrow with Caruana. <clears throat> but we see some good uh, energetic play by Fabiano. So look at this. 
always. And finally, at some point, G5 will come. <laughs> How did he do it? He went knight f4 directly. Oh, no, yeah, knight f4 directly. Knight one queen f6. This was taken. The usual debate. Yeah. Didn't play my chicken move in queen b3. That's a bit far away. Don't move the don't move the pieces away, Jan Shishtov. Okay, he's less scared. Queen b3, rook f6. So at some point, really, why not to go g5 and h5, g4? I mean, if white is not uh, careful enough, I mean, if it's black to move, I think g5 is possible. Let's make a move. Rook, so rook g6 is even better. Rook g6. I mean, you can be cooked in a second. Okay. I'll try not to be. Okay, rook f8, knight h2, right? My favorite move. Yeah, true that you secured yourself from every angle. Yeah, and once white is secure, the future belongs to him. That's the good news in these lines. Which is why I don't like them for black. Not sure why the queen had to okay, go let's here. See, let's see G5. Time for some action. I'm never sure about b5, when to play it, when not to play it. But... Yeah, on knight e7, you can take and queen b7. Yeah, I was thinking knight a5, but of course it's not the dream square That's for funny. helping the attack. Knight a5, queen b4, bishop c5, and b6. Even here, who's better and why? <laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> Probably black is fine, but it's a funny position. You mean d4 or something? No. Rook f8. I got too excited. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Takes takes bishop b4. Too much. Huh? What do we have? A rook, pawn, but in the knight. Yeah, I guess it's too much. Okay, then queen b4 doesn't make much sense. I'm not sure if b5 is the way to go then. Although this knight is also silly, so. Yeah, yeah, you just go, go back, back to C2 or D1 yeah, okay. and H5. Hmm. Yeah, not so sure about B5. Yeah, yeah, G4. Takes, takes, knight H2. Rook G6. Hmm. And after Queen G5, you just want to go Knight D3 and take my pawn? Of course. Yeah. 
Black First, would go queen f6. Queen f6 on g3. Queen g7. Yep, still a mess. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about this b5. Sorry. Very double edged to push the knight there. But I don't think I have time for, for all the moves. G5, H5, yeah? The poor king. My poor king. We have B5 on the board. Oh, directly. Without rook A2 or whatever yeah. we're doing. <laughs> Does the trick still work? Knight A5 for bishop C5 is still but I don't, area. But I don't understand. What... So if now rook, rook G6... Then b takes c6 is possible because of queen f3, queen e6. But no. Rook g6, king h1, uh, king then h1. you want to take? Or? That's a pawn. Knight. Oh, yeah, not completely a pawn, but uh, I mean knight a5 and then take. Mm -hmm. If I play... My favorite. Queen G3. Ouch. Knight G4, Rook G4. Rubbish with two directly, yeah. That won't be fun. Beautiful. So I should. What What's going on? If b takes c6, queen f3, queen e6, king h8, right? Queen, yeah. It's mm. over. This seems to work, yeah. Okay, so this is not possible. Mm -hmm. Then on rook g6, queen d1 is possible to protect the knight. But then what was the point to go to b3? I mean, after queen b1, knight e7, and black is, well. And why not this, king h1? Because knight a5. Ah, and Somewhere. you go queen c2 simply. <clears throat> OK. And on rook f8, knight 1h2. Finally. And you're happy. Never been happier. No, but it's the usual. Yeah? Like if black doesn't break through here, I'm always worried about black's chances. So Duda, Duda knows what he's doing. B5, very direct. <clears throat> Interesting. And yeah. I don't know. I really dislike these lines for black. I'm surprised by Fabi. It's not his style. His style is more move by move, but to accept the structure, I'm very surprised. By. Okay, let's. Okay, let's see let's what. Look what else is there? 
Ding is thinking after since A3 was played. A3 got him out of book. Yeah, and now started to think. 25. Not the minutes. first. Not the first move on his list, probably. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious if we'll get this knight g3 f3 stuff. No, but Ding just goes rook b8. Useful move against this b4, bishop b3, bishop d5, because then the knight is unpinned. But now it's nice for white, isn't it? I don't even understand. Isn't it a pawn? B4? No. Knight e5? Again, I keep blundering this. Okay. Knight g3. I've done the same thing five minutes ago. Yeah, now I cannot take with the f pawn. This I understand. H takes. Bishop b3. This position we had, no, like, I don't know, not well, exactly. You had an extra tempo, no, you had to already h4. You have knight h4. Yeah. I think we had this. Bishop d5, knight e7. Still like it for black. It looks not bad at all. It looks good. Bishop d5, bishop a2, mm, this is scary, nice for black. yeah, very dangerous, so after uh, rook b8, yeah, here he needs to do something, Now, what before has to be the idea. Maybe now start some action. Action. Not sure how much action there is, but how do you recapture bishop or pawn? I think pawn. Hmm. So now bishop b3 also doesn't have. Yeah. A4, B4. No, I don't quite see it. Even H5, I'm not sure I'm threatening anything. Mr. Rapport has to be very careful today, or Ding will checkmate him. Well, it's very dangerous game for from white yeah. perspective. You did but, ask for it. It's what what you get when you do this. Bishop but tell me, what was four. the what was the idea behind the move rook b eight? This I don't understand. No, I think just in these b four lines after bishop b three to stop stop bishop d five. No, it's very useful. But hold on, after before move. you take on g three. Yeah, I keep forgetting to insert this. <laughs> and now this is no longer a problem because of 97. Who knows? Maybe some lines the rook wants to swing over. But rook b8 is usually a move that black wants to play in all these positions. <laughs> Feels a bit random. I always feel like to check knight e5, knight g3, knight f7, king f7, fg3. But I just feel you go king g7 or something, and I gave away my piece for nothing. Yes. Not that many attackers there yet, are they? No. Yeah.
Okay, so we like Ding's position. Well, for now, Rapport. we're... I don't know if he's kicking himself, but it felt like maybe here, here was the moment to at least escape these dangerous positions by playing d4. Let's see what else we have. Fabi played knight to a5. Yeah, without rook g6, king h1. And two dice to decide where to go. I guess he just goes back. Uh, it's queen b4, bishop c5. Seems pointless. <coughs> Unless he wants to argue. Now he provoked bishop c5. B4. Yeah. It could be. But also queen b4 once again. Yes. This this becomes a topic, right? Right. Yeah. This is... King h1? No. No, this is maybe hanging. Well, that's a question still. Another strange position. And what about Rook F8? Can I play my favorite move in the whole world? Queen G3, Rook G1. Yeah, it seems like this holding the G2 pawn. Yeah. Is this an option or just go back and say your knight on the rim is dim? We'll find out Rajabov spending some time. And how did he do it? He went bishop a8. Let me check the database quickly, by the way, if, if this stuff has been played, but I don't think so. Queen c5 and bishop e3 was the, the new move. This is new. So knight e3, rook c8, rook c1, bishop to d5. Was there again any the question? No, bishop e3 was was a new move, which maybe was meant as an apomnishy surprise. It does seem, I think I was wrong. It does seem like he means business today. No, like he's trying to, to put pressure here. Not just going for a quick draw, which, <clears throat> yeah, it's a cool decision. Well, if he wanted to make a quick draw, he plays one e4, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's very good for him. He's ready to do battle in these one d4 main lines as well now, which we haven't seen him do a lot. But maybe he felt against Rajabov was a good spot because Rajabov tends to tends to stick to these very solid lines. And of course, the Catalan Nikomnishi has done a ton of work from the black side for the World Championship match. And this is the line that he also played in the match, which Rajabov has favored. Also, Rajabov played against Magnus. So yeah, I like his opening choices here. Overall, I think he's been very clever. Like he got in trouble once or twice, but he's been very clever. Like, what to do against whom? Against Duda, he went this knight f3, g3, got a great position. Today he goes 1d4. Against Ali Reza, he 
allowed this sharp knight over, and it has turned out pretty well for him. So he took on d5. I guess he takes d. We've had a similar structure, but maybe this is a better version for white. Hit the rook. I like it with white very much. He's yeah. going to go bishop e3. Knight d4, knight f5. I agree, it looks unpleasant. Not sure how we start. I also like doing this. Won't be fun for a job of. Also, great position for Nepomnishi stylistically. You no, know, his activity. He has all these ways to generate an initiative. We know how fast he is calculating. But uh, the knight on f5 is extremely dangerous. Mm -hmm. And if he has to go g6, that's a completely other story again. <clears throat> Yeah, not a fun spot. E Maybe. takes d5 has to go or no, this is I think I wouldn't. Knight d5. And if knight e5. You want to grab the c4. Of course. As far as I understand. Knight b6. Far away from home. That should be better now. I should have four. Sometimes you have to make excursions. That's what they told me. Going to Madrid tomorrow. Lie from there. G five. I have bishop e three. I'm not hanging a pawn, hanging a piece yet. I understand, mm -hmm. but maybe still it makes sense for black. Takes on e five, bishop f six. Maybe I should have gone knight f seven directly. No, but white has to be better, no? Uh -huh. <clears throat> I really think that after knight d5, e takes d5 is a very risky move. Even knight d5. Rajav of Greece. Yeah. Takes with the knight. It's also a risky move. Why is this a risky move? C4 is weak now. Let's lose again. 95. Excursion. Do I have anything else? Bishop f4, g5. Yeah? Well, okay, after Should bishop three direct. After bishop f4, I can go bishop f6 or. Yeah. yeah. Bishop d6. I can't take it. Yeah, maybe there's nothing. Bishop e3, queen e5 doesn't look like very much, no? D7, we should have six. Huh. What else can he do? E4, I don't like. Jan is very much into the game. 
look yeah, at yeah, yeah. focus completely lying into the chessboard. I had it all wrong. He's trying to decide matters today because if he wins another game plus five, then he won't be caught. Which is also impressive because usually the the leader in such tournaments slows down a bit when near the end. Oh, then saying, okay, try to catch me. But for him to, yeah, to try to put pressure today shows how tough he, he is mentally in this one as well and how good he's feeling. I'm impressed. Not sure if he's going to win, but tomorrow, the, the approach. Tomorrow he will have a very difficult game. Yeah. Firuza plays with white against Nepal. Okay, let's see if he manages to generate anything here. We don't see it yet. 95, 96 seems to be holding. And in Nakamura Alireza, Rook C8 is on the board. Yeah, very slow happenings over there. Caro spent almost an hour. Yeah. Pin. But that's nothing. What is though? Well, bishop g5, bishop b7, so what? Right? Yeah, but it's the it's typical takes... structure. No, no castle. We go C3 boring. Or whatever no, this is what we looked, right? You just played c3, knight d7. Yeah, yeah. I think I started with c3, maybe. Start with castles. Oh. He took oh, no. and he does take. Okay, he agrees. The queen takes. What's his point? Very reasonable play by Black. Anything direct? If not, uh, I don't know. Why would he exchange this knight? Here, queen g6. Nothing there yet. Mm -hmm. A wants to take. But check on e4. Yeah. Takes directly. But black is completely fine, I think. Even f takes e6, I wouldn't be surprised if it's playable. Yeah. No, I'm surprised by knight takes f6. I'm not sure what he wants to opt for here. And he also took a long time, a long time for the decision. No big deal with white. Look what has happened. Pin A2 he went. Young Christoph Duda against Fabiano. A2? A2. What's but the advantage? It, okay, keeps an eye, eye on this. On E6, yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe he wants to cover the C4 square if he want. needs to go T4 one day. Still far away from home. But yeah. <clears throat> Fabi's playing with fire today and Duda he's a specialist in this Italian he's played a lot of games so the structure if he doesn't run into move by move Fabi stuff I think it can be a very dangerous game for, for Corona and don't forget that whenever uh, whoever is in bad form many times no matter how, how bad form he is, he wins the game eventually. Yeah. And for Karana also, I thought he was amazing in the first seven rounds of this tournament. He only quote quarter plus three, but it looked like he did everything great. He was excellently prepared and he converted the chances he got. Well, maybe not all of them, but still quite some. I was very impressed. But since then, things have slowed down a bit. No, he lost this tough game to, to Hikaru. 
maybe he was also running a bit lower on energy after that long game. He didn't manage to put pressure on Jan, even though he had some nice prep there. And today, he's sort of in a must-win situation, but it's... Yeah, to my mind, it's the worst of both worlds, this line, and that white is very solid, but black can also be in trouble. Yeah. So I don't like it. Look what has happened in the in the Richard game. King H1, Rook B7. Oh, that was that was, that was the point of Rook B8, apparently. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not our reason. You can tell me this, that this is the point of Rook <laughs> this B. This maneuver I haven't seen before. So what, what is the idea? He wants to go rook e7? Or he wants to... What? what, what? <coughs> Sorry. Rook b7. Where's that rook going? I've never seen this. I've played these positions the problem, all my, my problem life. Is I still don't understand what's the point of that. Sometimes he wants to go f6 and go from this rook to g7 or what? Could be. Or he also, wants the he advantage. Wants to maybe the f7. Yeah, but. The knight e5, knight f7 thing. The advantage that I was mentioning that you no longer get pinned by bishop d5 is now gone because you, you again get pinned. What is this move thing? Must be some deep reason. I just don't yeah, think I understand. Knight c6, knight e5. So... Ah, but now knight e5 is not possible because knight b3. Yeah, no, it's a trick. But I still don't get it at all. Hold on. Why? Hold on. Hold on. b 7 I go bishop e5. And I show you my trick, that you have your rook on b7 and I'm going to be trapping your knight. Mm. Okay. Knight e5. I'm attacking one knight on h5. And if you move away, I play b4. Well, of course, it's uh, not so simple. Some some counter chances still. Not sure which move. Not a four. Uh, knight g4, four b four bishop b eight. Yeah. Another idea behind b rook b seven. Maybe bishop that's the big point. Provoking bishop e five. We don't bishop know. B eight is there. B four knight c six on the board. I don't get it. I'm very very curious because really. I've seen these types of positions so much, and I've never seen a rook go to b7 voluntarily. He spends two tempi, goes rook b8, rook b7. That's amazing. So many other moves. Castle takes. Maybe it's meant to prepare knight g3, fg in some line, and the rook covers f7. Yeah, but yeah, that can be easily the... The case before, but then wait for fg at least now before you do this. Now, yeah, bishop b3. He spent two tempi to have the same problem again. I don't get it. Also, there was no threat. No, you can play any move. I mean, castles would be seven. <clears throat> if takes. I guess F after King H1, he will always go F3, no? F6. Like, yeah. And now I can't, can't do this anymore. Time to switch to Team Richie after Rook B7. So you support my prediction? Getting there, getting there. What does he want? Does he want rook c7? Looks so awkward. Like a4. 
takes first. I'm such a Ding fan that I still think there must be some, some deep reason that we just don't understand. So what happens if I don't take on G3? I just yeah. strengthen my position and I go rookie seven. Let's say I try Lisa. to give, give sense mm -hmm. to the rook move on B7. Let's go here. Start asking questions. What are my rookies doing on his stuff? <laughs> looks, looks like Fisher random chess. Okay, I don't do this. Yeah. He went rook c7. All the time in the world, he's in a position where the board looks like it's It's burning. We can start attacking on the king side. We can castle. He was H6, Ding, five, spend not three H5. moves. <laughs> bring his rook to c7. Incredible. He didn't take it. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Also, he could play in two moves. He could play something like bishop d7, rook c8. But no. He went one step at a time. Maybe it's brilliant. Well, the question is whether uh, really how fast black has to play knight f4 or exchanging or whatever. Yeah. But still, okay, rook is on c7, fine. And what is it doing? Why is it so important there? Mm -hmm. Maybe it just felt he has time. Now he stopped bishop d5, he can go knight e7 again. And f7 yeah. uh, is important there, that I understand. Might be. Might be brilliant, but I've, I've never seen anything like this. If bc, he wants to take with the bishop now, yeah? But what do you... Uh, I want to go bishop d5. What do you do on bishop d5? A7, I can't. Then knight d5. Or bishop f7, bishop f7 and knight d5. What is this? Check. Check. The rook on c7 has drawbacks as well. Okay. How is this position? Here. I'm worried I'm just worse anyway. Queen g4, queen f5, and bc5. Let's see. No, there you're not worse. You're better. Not <clears> three, <throat> saying it. Uh -huh. Okay, then maybe this. So what has happened if I go B takes C five after Rook C seven? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I would guess he wants to take with the bishop now. D C bishop D five then. Or just take us takes on e5. So probably bishop takes. Very strange position. Now it's a knight of structure, sort of, but with a deep or Maybe Ding just understands this more deeply. He understands the bishop on g3 is out of play. I need to stabilize here, and sooner or later, things will be okay. Very creative plan. Very interesting. It's like acting. I have time all the time in the world. Yeah. 
act. Who comes up with this in this position? I'll spend three moves on putting my rook from A8 to C7. Can you check the computer after, uh, be before rook B8, if that's a computer plan or no? I can find out. After A3. Yeah, rook B8 is the move. Okay, rook B8, king H1. King H1. Now it just wants to castle. So no rook b7. And after rook b7, what does it tell? Hmm? It's fine. Likes it. B4, knight c6. This should be three. Ah, still wants to castle. Rook c7. Equal. Wants to take an a4. Fair enough. So computer, like rook b8, but rook b7, rook c7. It's not its first choice. But okay, it still uh, improved it to 0, 0. Yeah, but it was better than 0, 0 before. <laughs> Here, castle, set black was better. This <clears throat> It's going to be sharp, no matter what. A very cunning plan. By Ding. But also gave Richie a bit of time. It's not like it's to worry about direct attacks. What else we got? Queen A2 played here. Knight E5 was played. Knight B6 was played. And In queen e4. to e4. I like Jan's position. What's not to like? Two bishops. What did I say on this Wild game? pressure. I do not recall. It's possible. Five, might be six. Queen e4. It looks pretty passive for black, I must say. Yeah. If here, can we take? Takes, takes, b3, queen, d6. Mm -hmm. Is this the end? <clears throat> Should have four e5 here. Uh -huh. So we cannot take. Not yet. Bishop here. G5, then okay, white has some moves at least. I don't know which one. Knight d3, knight g4, yeah. This looks nice. Now it's possible to go knight c4, no? Ah, sorry, bishop f4. Now it's threatening knight c4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe does the knight, knight be d7? I mean, 8 be d7. Hmm. Can we still take? Takes B three. 
And by the way, <clears throat> if uh, after queen e4, black goes f5, you go queen e3, right? And you'll have four f5. Mm -hmm. Simply queen e3. And no bishop f6. No. I uh, know, bunch of options, can't calculate. D3 takes. You play bishop f6. Without f5. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Okay. The problem is she's gonna, not going to miss this queen d6. So bishop f4 should happen. Yeah, white, white is putting some pressure. Well, you can go also bishop c3. There we see Jan pouring whatever it is. His coffee. Is it coffee? Oh, and great news for you. There comes the cheap pour. Yeah. G5, we are there again. <laughs> See, I smell this, that he's going to go G5, H5. The queen is far away. Though now even queen D2 is possible. What is this? I still, I'm Don't still, in, I'm still team hater. Puzzled. You know, you know my move. H five. The greatest move in the world. Four. G four. G three. Next move. Uh, that I don't like. But seriously, what's he doing? Like, if this doesn't work, there's no way back. And D4 is coming next move. Fabis, he wants to win today very, very badly. But I think he went for... Risky stuff. Very risky stuff. And also a position where Duda feels comfortable and is experienced. This is worrisome for Team Fabi, in my opinion. What else does he have? H5 looks normal. I mean, it's not an A5 also. If it can't jump, it's not really contributing. I get it. Takes an entry for entry three. I don't know what to do after D4. Yeah. I don't see. We're also threatening G3, just winning the queen. Or G6 or whatever, but it looks unpleasant to say the least. Well.
Maybe he wants this, but is he happy? Yeah, maybe this is the only move. Yeah. But I still don't believe it at all. Such a crappy position. In the meantime, uh -huh. Oh, bishop c3 played indeed. Mm -hmm. But isn't this giving up our two bishops? I like the two bishops. Here. This takes. So looks like nothing. Doesn't look much, I agree. So maybe I jinxed him with my speech that I liked. Oh, he's putting pressure today. Yeah. So there's nothing else now? 93 is no, just take. Not much there. <clears throat> and whoa. GF6, Bishop B3. All your moves, all the moves I was hating on are being played today. GF, G5. If you have two G5s already. Yeah. Well, that one I'm okay with. Dings I'm okay with. He was breaking the pin at least. That one I can accept. A GF? I played something very similar structure against Kamsky. I was black and I, of course, played Queen F6. I mean, in the old days, at least you would want a knight on A3 in order to go GF, no, in this session you could. That's true. <clears throat> Of course, people are taking risks trying to get back into the tournament. But GF does look excessive. Like here you would play GF, but for very concrete reasons. And Bishop B3, you're not tempted by direct stuff. Take any time. But okay, knight E7 comes. Black tries d5. I'm shocked by everything. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, no. knight f6, queen f6, takes on e6. I understand it's it's going to be hard to create any winning chances. But here, why isn't black just worse? The king stands in the middle. Well, d5 next. But even after d5, the king is still, still an idiot there. <clears throat> you don't like the queen king so much. No, I do like the king. That's why I want to keep it safe. And now the poor guy has nowhere to go. Isn't white just much better? Like... D5 here, yeah? Mm -hmm. Takes. Knight takes. Queen. The king, Alireza. I understand. <clears throat> Oof. Maybe today is the day. The publisher just makes another draw and everybody else self-destructs by playing G5 or GF6, <laughs> trying to catch him with black. We have to praise the players for really trying so hard to get anything going. In all three black games, we have G5, G5, and GF6. Almost desperate attempts to mix it, other than the Rajabov game. It's yeah, very impressive by Ali Reza. 
Fabian thing. But well, my favorite work. today by the opening ideas is by far rapporting. This would be seven rook c seven g five knight h five story. Yeah, this this is also a maneuver that no one's heard of or seen before in these structures. Thing. Very creative. And we've seen it's also not the computer's plan. So he just thought, okay, this is the time to play rook b8, rook b7, rook c7. It's amazing. Bishop d5 on the board. And we looked at knight e7, bishop f7 or something, yeah? It, it looked fine yes. for black. So what does Richie want? Can you go bishop e5 here? What's the idea? E, e, bishop f7. So what happens if takes knight e5, king f6? Let's entertain ourselves. King e5, queen f7. Very central location. Or a queen of seven. G four is on the board. G four. Okay, so he didn't like ninety seven, maybe because of this stuff. Yeah. G four, I never liked positionally, in general, because after knight h four, will be hard to. Probably goes knight f4. Hmm? Knight h4, knight f4. If we go back, say mission accomplished. Isn't the d3 pawn under attack? I wasn't sure. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Well, eventually I can also play c4 one day. Mm. Directly? That I don't know. Maybe for now I go h5. What again? Yeah, once again, the rook doing his job. Okay, I have no idea what this position is, but it looks maybe HG. <laughs> looks like black is okay. And what on C4, knight C4? Yeah, but you go back, knight F4. X knight F4. Yeah. Now this, this was a bit too much for the poor position. Okay, so knight f4. If we can't give the pawn, bishop f4, I don't want to play. Well, bishop to... f4, ef g3, or what? Yeah. Knight f5. Though black king is in the center, and we can't say that anywhere it's going, it's going to find safety. Now you're speaking my language. You like castling. Generally, I like it, but I like it even better with pawns on g7 and h7. <laughs> but that ship has sailed today. Yes, I understand. So what now a mess. The big question is that after g4, what might want to do? What if I go bishop h4? So 
Sorry. That not quite. Early. Not quite. Yeah. F6, might as well. Bishop H4 on the board. What is spot? After F6, knight G1. Mm -hmm. And I want to go F3 or knight E2. And F4, let's say. Hmm. What a game. So what do you want, Mr. Ding? You want to move away? Probably that's what he wants. And that might be so. Okay, so after or have four. four, he's thinking. We have rook g6 on the board with Fabi. Ah, he did it without h5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still, can I go d4? But I think g4 is a threat after uh, rook g6, no? No? Yes, if it's black to move. No, yeah, but... not yet because my bishop is blocked by d4. But if it would be black to move again, then g4 seems strong. Fair enough. Mm. How does this work? H5, I want it. Sorry. We'll have to come up with something. Okay, good. But D4 looks so normal, no? Like, yeah. That's why I went B5, first the knight here, blocks the bishop, prepares G3. And also just rook AD1. It's, the structure is so awkward for black. Like, ED is unpleasant, and else waiting for when white goes DE or D5. So, what is your threat after rook D1? Just saying, I don't, I don't need a threat, I'm just better. Like rook d1, one day I'll decide if I want to go d5 or not. Maybe g3 first. Really don't like black's position at all. d4 on the board. Uh oh. And h5 fast. Here we are. So it's transposition. Still hate it. Rook D1 anyway. We do not believe yeah. you, Mr. Also, Father. it's a question whether why not we go G3. Yeah. But what's wrong with this? Like, I don't see what he wants. Assuming I can always go G3 if needed. Yeah, but as we know, pawns never go back. True. Also, I'll probably blunder some h3, h3, h3 g3, gf. But now after rook d1, g4. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should probably play g3 when given the chance. But this is already late. I know. Not h4, g3. g3. Trouble is looming. No, I don't know okay. if it's over because now <laughs> yeah. just take. Just take the rook yeah. after g3. Still life. Hey, hey, hey. I see that the uh, rapport is, is walking. 
I think he feels okay now in his game. This group D1. Yeah, or, or directly. Saying Fabi's going to lose this. It looks really bad. I don't know what he's done today. Like going for the structure already with opponent A6, as mentioned. Found a very strange decision. Then he didn't have anything particular. Now he's going for... I think his desire to play for a win was bigger than his mm -hmm. objectivity today. It's the dream position for it. This knight is far away. Well, if he can block out. with d4, for sure, it's yeah. uh, very tough for black. Just looks lost. Of course, it won't be easy to finish Fabi off, and I'm sure there will be there will be issues. The knight is not doing anything. There's always the option to open the position whenever whenever he feels like. G4 doesn't look like it's attacking, it's just yeah, weakening further. Oof. Yeah, now it's not clear how Black wants to be improving or give some. Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe G3 I go. Yeah. Hmm. I thought to go to F7 and to then to have a group F6, but everything was hanging for me. Yeah. It's hard to attack anything. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, I can always go rook f1, like the problems don't go away. No. Looks extremely grim. And yeah. Surprising. Because also, if he wanted to mix it up, well, it's always easy to say after it happened. But if he wanted so desperately to get a messy position, then I don't know. Play some Sicilian sideline or something. Well. I don't know what he has in mind now. True. I don't think Devon mind anymore. He's just just lost. You're so cruel. Don't you agree? Like this, it looks like everything's collapsing. Or not directly. But... No, I don't see counterplay for black. Yeah. This is my biggest problem. Yeah. That where and what the e5 is is pressed there. So anytime d takes and rook d7 is possible. After g4, knight h4 is very unpleasant. H4 obviously you cannot play because well, h4 king g2, I guess, and then knight g4. Yeah, it's just positional suicide. Does knight? Well, would need the pawn to get here, which will never happen. Well, okay, let's see, see what he's going to play. We have knight e7 played by Ding. Got a computer evaluation. Oh, yeah, it's growing. Yeah. Computer says this, takes, takes, and oof. Cold-hearted. Somewhat strange, because DE wakes the bishop up and gives this square, and then to play rook f1, but it says it's very strong. King h1, that move I like. Sorry, I was just checking what the computer says, but yeah, it gives white a big, big, big advantage. And Ding went knight e7. What to do? Go away? Do you have to go away? Is this even a threat, GF? GF is, uh, well, maybe it can be a threat takes a knight f4, right? Hmm. Maybe bc5? Bishop d4 d4, are you okay? Then 
Quintex. Not enough. Though I was... Oh. If the night goes somewhere... Yeah, I'm but if sure I go to square. one, that's not the place that I was aiming for. Yeah. Maybe even black just goes queen d7, yeah. yeah. And knight g6. And then the h4 bishop is in trouble. Right. What an opening. This game is fun. Also, every move, like, it's completely unclear who's better and why, no? Like, to, to me, at least, you can't predict any move. And I have no idea what's happening. It's, it's an amazing game. Yeah. The thing is that right now, is it the threat to take on f3? Is a threat because takes takes knight f4. That's what we thought, yeah. So if he has to go away, knight e1, knight f4, or queen d7. Then we so like maybe black that huh? can be better. Okay, let's say ninety one. What if I take on e seven? Guess queen. I was even considering g three, maybe. Sure. Yeah, that you're not going to be reaching to f four. But Richie I still like Black's position. Knight G1. Mm -hmm. Back home. Okay, so if after Knight G1, Queen D7. We have something similar. Looks like you have to take no, allowing Knight G6. Takes, takes. <clears throat> Once again, maybe G3. If takes, how do you recapture? That's a good question. I think both are interesting. Also, no, I want to go bishop because after DC, you will go C4. Here I was hoping I had some, some activity. Takes. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm going insane. <clears throat> My plan was CD, bishop d4, queen a4, check. But mm, it's not a check. That's the um, <laughs> that's a minor drawback. Okay. So you go knight b3? Or a4, I don't know. Trying to do something, but it's not sure how much time there is. You know that bishop f2 can be a threat. I don't know that. But it's <laughs> Let's see. No, if a bishop f2 takes queen h4. <laughs> g3. Not this g3. is a big threat. So only move. Okay, knight h5. Sorry. Um, yeah, scary. And ding. Doesn't want to think about this. Go CB4 now. 
opens the C file for his rook. Not a bad decision. Open up the rook and the bishop at the same time. Yeah. And he does it at a moment when A, B probably doesn't work because the pawn is just freeze. Them. So white should go C, B. Drawback, of course, he also opens it up for white. So what happened with Ding? Started to play well? Looks like no. He just needed a win. And now it's the old Ding. Today. I have no idea what the position is, but it feels like he's creative, brave. Also playing reasonably quickly, no? Like he, I mean, not super quickly, but it's moved 20 in a complete mess of a position. And he's only, quote, unquote, spent 50 minutes. Feels like he's using his time. Yeah. In a, in a good way. Well, I don't know. What else can you do than C takes B? Give the pawn and hope for the best. Does Richie like to sacrifice? Because I think I since he has his creative style, people think he's a big sacrificer, but I'm not sure he is. But... I don't uh, think that he's sacrificing so much. Yeah. Many times he goes more to the positional stuff. Yeah. Oh, but maybe he's thinking now on queen b3. What do you think? Mm. Castles. Okay, that's another story. You don't want to castle. Do. No, if you castle, then for sure I play queen b3. I go a b4, <laughs> a b4. Then there is no question. No so debate. Because now you're not going to have any attack. I'll live with it. <clears throat> you live with it? Okay, c4. E takes F5. But I don't know, maybe F4. What do you think? I don't know. Is Black doing well? But White is also doing well. Yeah. Both sides. Unless I don't doing great. with Bishop E3. <clears throat> so maybe I go C5 now. After F4, E4 directly. Yes. What a mess. But he played A takes B4. Here we go. He gives so the pawn. Finally, pawn is given. And what do I uh, get in return? May I ask this very naive question? Maybe he will try to naive trap the rook. Two, and then the rook goes back f4, right? If takes, that's what I was wondering. Then queen c2. I understand. Are we doing well here? Takes. Maybe takes. But that you can do in the next move too, probably. Yeah, I wanted to castle, of course. But I'm not sure who's better and why. If Black gets some moves, he'll be great. F5. But... Sorry? F5. Yeah, it's white to move, but I do want to do that. There is some simplification going on between uh, the Jan and Napo. Can we check on that for short? He went bishop c3 and then on knight d7 went bishop d4 and started to exchange. Bishop c3 felt a bit like a draw for now, like now the pieces are just coming off. It takes, no? I don't know if he has to. It's not a good sign if he has to take. What else? Ah, but actually a pawn is going to be missing. Knight b6, queen okay. b6, rook c4, right? b3? 
or e3 first. No, but e3 bishop d b2. Rook c4. Rook b8. Okay, but it's just a draw. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> ah, yeah, but I thought white wants to do something still. Oh. Well, for example, rook d1. No. Mm -hmm. uh, it did take on p6. So he wants to draw. Yeah. Because mm. queen b6, rook c4, bishop f2, right? King f1, rook d8. Doesn't look like it's white who gets uh, more fun here. I think it will just be e3 and handshake. Okay, fair enough. He has plus four. He doesn't need to win. Yeah, he's not pressing it. Also, he sees Fabi's in trouble, which is yeah, good, great walking. news for him. He was walking a lot, so he knows. Yeah. And in such a situation, somehow you have the feeling these guys have eyes in the back too. Of course, <laughs> always not. They are just following every everything, not only their own games, for sure. Ding has taken the pawn. Wow. It's a busy rook. So what is it going to be here? Well, what does he want? Rook c1 and just give away the pawn? Or he wants, I don't know. The knight e2 f4 look very normal. No, I'm not sure if rook d3 is serious or if you should just go back. Also f4. Yeah. What else? Well, this is a mess. What about uh, it's a huge mess mess. Yeah. Who is better? And why? Isn't white uh, having you, some... you know what I want to do as usual? Oh and after F5 you resign? No. No? I do not want to resign. And about the G4 pawn? What will happen? It's not under attack. So here. Yet. Yet. <clears throat> I don't know if I can go knight g3. Knight takes g3, queen g4, king h7. Check, check, check. Oh. Uh, I have to take back and then h5. Yeah, h takes, let's say. Hmm. 92 on the board maybe we get to see all this although I'm still curious if maybe he wants to take yeah after every two moves I'm thinking differently if Ding is playing <laughs> so well then I think nah Rapport will win goes back the rook f4 no, that's... F4 is a killer. It also feels like the initiative is changing with every move. Like one side makes a move and you think, ah, that's a great yes. move. CB, the pawn is hanging, and then Richie takes back. Oh, <laughs> the white sacrifice pawn looks very dangerous, so you take it and you can give the exchange. It's a very rich game. and yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Very rich, Richard game. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why he's the new chess idol, according to Dietzeit. Today, yeah? Yesterday already. Rooks is seven. Yeah. Rooks is seven. Ding is not tempted by that pawn. Well, understandable. <laughs> but now F4, F4 castles F4. ding. Ale. F4. Okay, so you go castle. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, also, there's F E. Yeah, it's um, F E, queen B3. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little scared, but what to do? Only a little scared? Mm -hmm. Pawn up. Oh, that was That's nice. The life of a pawn grabber. Sometimes you get checkmated. Oh, yeah. No, but seriously, is it so bad? F E D E D E four or C. 
and 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 takes actually well i don't know i'm even considering rook f4 yeah but i actually i'm not even sure what i'm doing here <laughs> no. um Okay, with the somewhat, uh, I'm hanging more stuff every move. Now I'm hanging the queen. Well, because it's so bad. <laughs> it is so, so bad. bad. <laughs> no, can you switch on the computer? Because I can't believe it that it's not minimum three. Three? Here. Never. As the boss. Boss. Black is better. Yeah. Queen e8. Ale, ball oh, grabber. Nice move, computer. <laughs> Queen e8, I'm pinning. Okay, don't ask it again. Take it, take it, take it. <laughs> Thank take you, it computer. <laughs> take it away. What do you what mean? What a nice move. What do you mean black is better? Pawn up. But Queen e8 is beautiful. Uh... Covering, unpinning. Ooh. Yeah, this is why we should not ask. <laughs> was... Because it destroys your mood. No, that, that lifted up my mood greatly. Speaking of mood, are you in the mood for a little break? We're almost two and a half hours in. Time yeah, for a sure, little coffee sure. refill. Before, let's make a tour yep. because we have moves everywhere. Uh, we have, practically, we have, uh, yeah, in that position with Hikaru, D5. He went for D5. He took here first. Yeah, you know what this game going to be? It's going to be crushing 1 0. This? Huh? What do you mean? It will be a draw. Why do you think it's going to be what? ED, Queen, D5. What do you want? Any move. Queen, E2. So what? I, have I, I think white is much better with this king. I don't see where it can find safety. No, black is going to go bishop, G7. Probably F5 yes, in the next move. Well, rook d1, queen e6, f5. Or queen c6 is also quite a reasonable move instead of queen e6. And then e4, f5. All right. Hikaru will figure it out. Okay. And what? Uh, <clears throat> this one we predict to draw. Well, we don't have to be geniuses for this. I would still take here and then be checkmated <laughs> with yeah. some caution. The opportunity is given. <laughs> yeah. Chances there. Okay. And then we have Fabi. Fabi is still in big trouble. Do not like his position one bit. King H1. Why not? My only question is why, yes. Yeah, that's also point. fair. What's the point? H4 you want to go or what do you want to? Didn't feel strictly necessary, but it's a good thing. White doesn't have to do anything if black doesn't have any threats. Sooner or later, something will show up. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Gives you just enough time to go to both chess24.com and become a premium member because that gives you access to all the video series by all the greats, Magnus Carlsen, Vishy Anand, many others. Also to my fantastic new series with my dear friends, Peter Heinelson and Laurent Fresinet, where we give you all the secrets of what happened in the 2021 World Championship match behind the scenes. Check that out with the code CANDIDATES2022 you get 50% off and a mark. We'll be back soon.
the Grunfeld is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 Knight of. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. A5. What do you think about this opening? Honestly, what do you think? You don't have to play knight c3. We can actually put a piece on d2, which is better, because then we avoid the potential doubling of our c pawns. What you have to understand about practical endgames as a whole is that just like in the middle game or the opening, um, you cannot rely uh, solely on these general considerations. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess...
Welcome back, everybody. Round number 10 of the candidates. The black players are taking a lot of risks today. We have three still very fun positions on the boards, and we have the first result. Nepomneshi Rajabov did end in a draw, not surprisingly. Judith, which of the games do you want to go to first? Well, I think we should jump into a Rockport thing because there are so many happenings in the last few minutes while we were on break. And I don't really understand anything, I think. What is going on? Who is better? Already you surprised me with the engines of elevation before. But now, again, it's like it looks so dangerous for them. And uh, so can we go back to F4? You were suggesting castle. Being played F6. F6 looks like it's a suicidal move, isn't it? Leaving the king in the center. Weakening, but let's see what he's up to. F takes E, T takes E. Now I was wondering if rook F6 was possible. What happens? No. Looks dangerous to say the least. So my idea is after knight D5 to go rook F8. I lost count of the material. How, how's the situation? 
Ah, uh, this is uh, the problem. This is the problem. And that, well, yeah. No, this is not good because it's equal so material and look at two and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so an IT3 intermediate move, which is killing my idea. And if rook okay. e6, it's the same story, or you can I think it's back the here? <clears throat> no, same bishop e6, bishop d8, knight e3, why not? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, your rook is not on f8, so it's not so good, but I think it's good enough. That's still fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. And whatever, knight f4, knight f4, bishop e5. Finally, castles. Yeah. Okay, so he went, upper went knight g3. Thing takes h3. And rook f8. What a game. Every move, we don't know who's better and why, and all the decisions are completely non standard. It's not like there's any pattern recognition. F6. D, E, rook to F8. And we still don't know what's happening, or I don't. Okay, take on F6. So let's say rook F6 first. Yeah. Probably takes, takes, and queen D6. Queen D6, uh -huh, to unpin. I guess takes. Bishop takes. The problem is that rook takes, let's say, or... All of a sudden, this king is a little awkward, yeah? Like, queen G6, H5 is just threatens with mate. Yeah. So it's, uh, I must say, it's not funny from white. And knight f1, h2 is not the dream no. sequence of moves for white either, but maybe it's the only one. Like okay, so right let's... Shape now. <laughs> yeah. Let's see after rook f8 what white has as other options. So knight d5 is a threat. So what happens if bishop f6? Is it rook the same takes. queen d6? Or you can go takes, takes, knight d5, rook h6. Tricks here, you're not threatening to take the queen. Maybe just queen g5. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you can do practically anything, even you can yeah. go knight f6 because yeah. you can give away the queen also. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> meant. And rook h7 next. Well, knight f1. It's not, it's ah, not knight f1, sorry. No, then knight f than what you told 93. The king is so weak. Right. Bishop f2 can No, actually, it's killing. No, no, no. Knight, rook h7 and uh, knight h5, queen e1 you have. Doesn't this look dangerous? Well, I want to give a check and go here. It's like uh, already for quite some time every move. Okay. Let me rephrase. Isn't this winning? <clears throat> I don't know. At least it's it's not something rapper wants. Sorry, what's that sound? That might be me. Apologies. And rook f6 and queen d6 on the board. Oops. So what? White is going to go back to, to h4, I think. Then knight d5. Uh, and h6, will... knight e4. Uh -huh. He played queen f1. Uh -huh. Yes, that's the other one. Huh. What a game. Incredible. I don't know who, with which color I would be playing it more. If we take, takes, takes. Uh, rookie one, bishop d4, right? Mm
<laughs> chaos. But we have incredible position on uh, on uh, uh, Fabiano's game too. <laughs> Look what we have. King H1, Rook F8, and Duda is going for, for the kill. Takes an H4. G4, he wants knight G5. If GH, just GH. Knight takes. So maybe just pawn takes. This, this knight is a sad piece. But here, Bishop F2, how does this go? I don't know, Rook F1. Takes. Knight F5. F5. Yeah, seems to work now. And what if G takes H? Also, what you're suggesting? Also looks nice. Just rook G1 next. Yeah, GH is on the board. We'll see what Duda has in mind. Also, actually, after knight h4, maybe queen f2. Queen e6, king h8, queen e5, simply, right? And then queen g3. You go knight f5. Yeah, you go knight g6. Go knight g6. Yeah, and if king h7, then knight f5, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's too much. But he did play GH. And GH4. Hmm. It can be very dangerous for Bobby. Hmm? You want music? Yeah. <laughs> I have kind of music. Sorry. My daughter is looking for a radio here. Uh, I don't think I can offer any. Uh, GH plate. It can be very dangerous for black. If once white is reaching out to G5 and rook G1, how can black stop this? Still think he's lost. It's not an A5, what's he doing? <laughs> Very difficult game for Fabi. So what happens if something goes bad in this game for him? Well, he loses. How how is the this uh, the situation right now? Standings. That would be huge for uh, Napo. Yeah, that's why <laughs> Napo was probably thrilled to make that draw. Because if Fabi loses, Nepomnishi would be one and a half points ahead with four games to play. That's massive. And if Ding, let's say, wins, for whatever reason, then he's catching he catches up. Fabi, yeah. Which or has the one. usual implications that... Well, if second place gives a world championship match, then that's no longer a lock for Caruana either at all. Yes, but it's uh, going to be a fight, even the second place. Yeah, that's what I mean. If there is a go, yeah, if there is a decisive game, for example, or if Rapport wins, he's catching uh, Fabi also. Yeah. 
Yeah, or Hikaru. Yeah. So how is he doing? Let's see. How did they do? Mm -hmm. so Hikaru was... has a very nice position. Isn't he has a huge advantage? You always said it, but something went wrong. I think something went wrong when he <laughs> recaptured on f6 with a pawn. No, but it wasn't so bad. Come on. I mean, after d5, takes, takes. Queen e2, queen c6, or what did he do? Knight f5. Knight f5. But why knight f5? The f5 square is for my pawn on f5. He didn't know. But really, what are you doing with your knight on f5? I'm sorry. Yeah, I agree. It looks very clumsy. Okay. Although, yeah. I do this think the position is bad either way. But. <laughs> this is not what you're using your knight in these structures. But why? Well, he could go simply bishop g7. And f5. Yeah, that's what we looked at. No bishop yeah. g7 here. But okay. He went knight f5, which I don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't like knight f5 as much as you don't like gf. <laughs> Fair enough. Queen c6. Wow, what a shaky business. C4. Oh, and he just went c4 and rook d5. That's it. Yeah, with the knight gone there, makes a lot of sense. And oh, yeah. Hey, c4, bishop g7. <laughs> Some intruders here. Bishop g7, rook d5. Castles, rook a d1. Rook f8, h3. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just torture. Mm. Hard to change the challenge the defile, and the king is chronically weak. But I think it's a huge advantage. Sure. Whew. And it's very difficult for black to play also. It's not that you have an easy game, even if you're... It, it just probably it's not lost yet. But it's very bad, and within a few moves, it can be badly. Yeah. Looks horrible. 92, queen somewhere, 94. Why does plenty of stuff to improve the position if needed? Yeah. Plenty of opportunity. Well, first of all, after h3, I mean, white can anytime go queen c2, right? Force you mm -hmm. to do something with your knight. No, it's very bad for Firuza. Yeah, both Ali Reza and Fabi today took great risks. And so far, they seem to be backfiring. I think Fabi's position is just hopeless. And Duda is not going to let go from here. He's such a gifted attacker. Tactician. And finally, he's going to score a full point. Yeah. And look at him. He's not giving up. He's fighting, fighting, fighting every single day. And now Firuza also fighting. He gives up a pawn by playing b5, but I think white is not going to take, just play c5. Or is it would it be a blunder to play c5? No, because knight after d4. knight d4, knight d4, queen d5, knight f5. Six. Yeah, okay, all right. Keeps having a beautiful position. Well, queen e4. Oh no, queen g4 bye. Queen e4, knight g7, bye bye. And bishop h6. Not pleasant at all. So, what do you want after c5? b4? Uh, maybe or? nothing. Do I have to play c5? Like, it restricts the pieces a bit. Uh, maybe f7. Yes. You don't like c5? I like the white position. How do you like this move? That is also possible. I think c5 square is very important. Yeah. Big problem for black's position. The only thing is what's next? Queen e4? Yeah. No, it's, it's a sad story. Yeah. Whew. Very difficult position for Blanc. Yeah. 
So now it's the question uh, whether, how is Nakamura's technique? Usually That's it's pretty not good. Not a weakness in his game. It's usually no. excellent. <laughs> no. So let's go back to Richie's game because that yeah. is the most complicated yet. That one is still a complete mess where anything could happen. Well, in the other two games, it looks like White is on the verge of winning. So Richie, Queen F1 and Ding taking his time. Ding has more time, 42 minutes versus the 18 that Rapport has. That is not much. To decide if he should take or leave because it Because right now, White's next move would be Bishop F7, maybe. Yep. Right? So Knight D5 is a question, but okay, Black can go Bishop D4 also. What do you do on that? Uh, but hold on, hold on. No. Ding. I thought for a second that Black can take and Rook F7, but Knight E4. Mm -hmm. But that's also a question, by the way. Sorry. If takes, takes, Rook F7, Knight E4, Queen D5. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Knight E4 was coming anyway, no? So if we take directly. Okay. But still, I want to go rook f7. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. Rook c1, something. Still go either way. Okay, bishop e6, let's say. Strange position. But okay, I have another question. If we go back, and if I don't allow your knight on e4, in the uh, position which is on the board, after queen f1, what about bishop e6? <clears throat> yeah. This king, I'm always very scared. Well, I I understand your scareness. <laughs> okay, keep the bishop to keep an eye on him. It's a bit passive, I will admit. Bishop e3 is possible also. Yeah. So bishop e3, maybe queen e2, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I go rook c2. I'd like to go knight b3, can I? Or am I just hanging a piece? Probably just hanging a piece. Twenty one. Who's better and why? The usual question. <clears throat> okay, let's try something else. But it's a big question for Black how to continue, what to exchange. Yeah. I have not a very good feeling for White. <clears throat> Looks very dangerous, but 95, then at least the white pieces, they are operating. Ding taking his time here. It does feel like a key moment. So what if black just takes on D5 twice? Knight e4, rook c6. It's not so obvious, yeah? The knight on e4 is excellent. Yeah. Yeah, bishop h4. Okay, let's go back and see what black can do. Maybe it's not so easy with black. Either. 
what about knight f5? Ooh. Takes queen f6, knight e4. Okay, so I cannot get to h5. Okay, this is good. And if just caveman style, okay, we had this, we tried rook f7. No, well, it's, it's messy, yeah? Like, yeah, it's not easy because white suit pieces are also extremely strong. Yes, I mean, e4 sure. and f6 should be not least uh, less uh, powerful than the bishop pair, right? And you yep. cannot get to h5 with the queen. Even if you get there, still bishop h4. So it's more of uh, being scared than in reality, whether it's really so dangerous. So ding taking. <coughs> Bless it. <coughs> Apologies. Ding taking a lot of time here. Trying to figure out what to do. Should be six takes. This he could also consider. Hmm. Well, the thing is that after knight g6, also, what's, what's the threat? Is there any? I don't think so. Just controlling that square, asking why to make a move. <clears throat> because this knight is also still clumsy if it doesn't, doesn't get to jump. Can we go knight b3 or you take on b4? Sounds tempting, but also if just if just here, now that the knight is sidestepped. But I think I would be going knight c5 or something, or d4. What about d4? d4. Takes. D takes C. Takes. Oh, well, takes. You don't want to play this yeah. with black, are you? Queen F5? Enjoying? <laughs> mm, not giving up yet. <laughs> Queen E6. D6. <gasps> Surprise! It's just a draw, but unfortunately. A draw. But... but this is not what I meant. No, no, no. In the, this previous move, Queen G4. Yeah, yeah. I was just hoping. To get this in. Not check, Queen G4. Mm -hmm. Go try. Mm. Actually, for white, it is generally speaking kind of a plan to go knight b3 and d4, I think. How did we get this? Uh, knight g6 and then knight b3. Yeah, tough decision for team. On the other boards. No more tough decisions. Bishop c5, rook g1. This just plays itself, doesn't it? Yeah, how can Black defend himself? 17 minutes only, 15 moves. Bad form. 17 hours here wouldn't be enough. And Nakamura played c5. Bishop f8, b4, I guess. Four. <clears throat> Shouldn't he have fought against b4 at least? Okay, play b4, a5. I think it's hopeless. Yeah. So the players are so good. Once black starts trying to mix it, sometimes it just gets punished. 
Yeah, I mean, after B4, what does he want to do? Knight G7, E6 or what? But okay, Knight H4 then. Queen E6. Finally, he will go Queen E6 and F5. <laughs> Too late, but... Well, Knight on G7 is... Okay, I will go F5, Rook E, uh, Bishop E7, and I'm trying to get back on track. This okay takes queen c4. Shouldn't go too crazy yet, yeah. Okay, we should h6. Long way to get back on track from here. Well, somehow F5. Takes. Looks takes hopeless. Queen we'll H5. Take well, King, yeah? Yeah, well, it doesn't only look. It's it's painful. He went knight D4. Ah, we should have thought of this, but... Well, okay, knight takes D4, queen D5, knight F5. Ah, so queen G4 is not there. Was it a blunder or what? Let's find out. Did I blunder this? Queen g4, king h8. Rook d6. Rook d6, queen c4. Still looks well, terrible, but at least we have an exchange. Well, he's right to do this, of course. Yeah, only chance. Let's figure it out. This looks correct. Takes either five or check first. Maybe check first. Doesn't make a difference, I think. Here we are. Well, actually, black could go queen c4 here or or uh, if knight f5 first here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just pretend it's all part of the plan. Rook d8. Yeah. Bishop h6, right? Or A rook takes d1. Oh, but it's. Uh, I wonder if he blundered. Maybe it's just winning slowly this position, but it's uncomfortable to have to play material down. Huh. You think he missed it? I don't know. I missed it, unfortunately. Oh, you spotted it like a move before. Which is yes, a move before, him. yes, but I didn't realize it that Bishop F8 is making a huge difference. I don't uh -huh. know. For two reasons. First of all, it's going out. Secondly, Queen C4 is possible after B4. Let's get a silicone opinion. Silicone says white wins. 25, silicone. Um, just knight f5, yeah. Knight f5, queen c4, Let's just see. queen f3, doesn't care. Yeah, okay, and knight d6 is the problem. Hard to disagree, but it's still awkward. Yeah, like to have to give an exchange and you can't be sure of the board. Well, I think still black sh uh, had to go knight d4 because simply yeah. otherwise it's hopeless. Yeah. I mean, this also you're not happy to allow to have knight on f5. And your bishop is blocked completely. Position is just so disgusting. Yeah, he, he had to try this. Does white have any other ways? This is not great. White is still better, but it's a lot less good. No, it's better to keep it closed and control the F5. So maybe Hikaru, even if he missed it, he would be forced to, to go down this road.
And here, white just wins this tempo. Rook d6, queen c4, and just queen g3. Uh -huh. 94 on the board. Queen takes d5. Knight f5, even I would play. It's, it's tempting to grab the pawn, but. No, you don't grab it. Like that. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, we can show it to our viewers. You don't take those pawns because the queen goes somewhere to e6, let's say, and finally f5 is going to be played. Well, it's not so like... That's also losing completely? It's not like black is winning here, but yeah, knight f5, I agree. Yeah, but still, you Looks somehow better. you don't want to let this f5 pawn square without yeah. having a knight there. And uh, Ding is thinking, you know? Still, yeah it's, a, yeah, it's a rough position. Though he still has much more time than uh, Richard. Let's and it's, see. It's complicated. Compi does say knight g6 and knight b3. Oh, knight f4. Well, Compi is tough. But what's the point? Well, the point is... I meant if the bishop goes, but now the knight no longer gets here. Mm, what a tricky thing. Now it gets the same stuff, but with more, more tempi. Well, it makes a difference that my knight is not on e4, and it takes time to get there. Yeah. It says knight g6, rook e1. That's still knight f4. No, bishop e6. It's a total mess. Like... Anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, here, whatever the engine says. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's chaos. But of course, uh, in every move, there are several ideas for Black how to continue. Yeah, knight g6 is one of them. But of course, knight d5 is the most obvious. Yeah. Let's see what Ding comes up with. Duda. Well, if I had to go bishop d6, which is also not pretty square, but what to do? Knight g5, queen f2, I guess doesn't work. Clearly doesn't work. Check. Well, knight, knight uh, e6, yeah, sorry. Yeah, knight e6 looked yeah, decent my, as well, but here. No, queen on a2 is hanging. <laughs> ah, then knight e6, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, but now ninety six is anything sure. will do. So what can Black do? Rook e eight or what? Instead of taking. Fun it is not. Not really. It's hopeless, isn't it? Also Queen E2 one day. Looks hopeless. Ding play bishop d4. Nakamura play knight f5. The action is picking up. We're not that far away from the time control. It's in 43 minutes. So at some point they'll have to speed up. Bishop d4. Where are the rookies going off, Richie? D1, b1. Bishop e f7 check. Yeah, we talked about this, and the king has to go away. Probably he was not happy with the fact that black can take it. Understandably. What a game. Yeah, quite impressive, I must say. I don't even know if they're they're making all the all the best moves, but it's so non-standard every single decision that it must be almost yeah. impossible to play. So king d7 or king d8? Which one do you like? I don't know. Both has his drawbacks. Pros and cons, yeah. King yeah. d7 played.
Wow. But I don't understand why the bishop stands well on d4. I would put rook b1 probably and then go for uh, knight b3. <clears throat> I mean, one, two moves, and then it can be a huge problem for black. And after knight b3, you go rook f2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If rook d1. Rook a2, yeah, d1. Still rook c2, uh, the bishop can go back here. Bishop h5. That way. I have no idea what's happening in this game. Well, it can be very dangerous for Richard also. But certainly every square is controlled so well by Buck. <clears throat> Rook d1 played. He's sharp though. He's not giving any simple chances. What's the time situation? 60 minutes versus 23. Then more moves. Two nine. But rook c2 seems uh, to be a pretty good move, I must say. I like it's it. Tempting, yeah. Just because down the knight. also the king can sneak away with king c7. That's also an idea. But for the moment, it's like, uh, what can white do? Bishop b3, rook b2, I guess. I thought maybe takes. Oh, no, it doesn't work here. Takes queen b4, still queen d1. But maybe now bishop e7. I'm always happy to see that bishop go. And rook c1. What's going on? Well, some checks going on. It's not so easy to defend. OK. That was a good one. Rook, Rook C2 on the board. Isn't it over with Fabi there, knight E6? Can we check for a moment? Hmm. It's been over. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Because queen E6, queen H5, Rook H7, I'm sorry. No need, no. Just, just bring, bring the Rook. He needs a miracle. Knight on the rim. And it will stay there. This is a model game for why a knight on the rim is dim. Hmm. Yeah, for black to defend this. It's not what about rook f4? Knight h3, queen e4. So that's not possible. Rook g1. And don't queen uh, rook h4, knight e6. Or knight f3. Yeah. We're, we're very worried we can go knight h3, but I don't think... No, but why really... to go away, right? When you can mm. uh, improve your position with rook g3 and doubling it. Agreed. Rook c2, bishop b3 is on the board. Okay, so now the big question is whether rook b2 or uh, what else? 
Mm. Still up in the air. And it's a big game, especially with Fabi in big trouble. Whoever wins this is on plus one, no? Exactly. Catches Fabi. Yeah, the tournament is incredibly interesting developing. Yeah, it would be less interesting if we knew Magnus was playing the next match because then we would think, okay, it's you Nipomishi see, it's again. Interesting for everybody. He generously spiced it up a little. Well, we hope it's only spicing it up. Speaking of spicing it up, what if we... Ah, yeah, he goes back. What if we start with this? Why did he go back? Rook B2, Rook C1? Maybe he didn't like this. So another question is what's... So Ding went back, Rook C7. The first move that comes to mind is not Bishop F7. Not exactly. Maybe Bishop H4 to make yeah. space for the Queen. Can we ignore it? Check. And then... Rook C1, Rook C7, yeah. Yeah, rook c1. Yeah, this doesn't work. Or... No, but it's still not over because queen c1. Let's check. No, but you can go king b7. <clears throat> ah, so. We had bishop d5 first, possibly. But so what? Mm -hmm. This d4 bishop can be extremely powerful. A ding. Just went rook c2 and back. So it's not like he has everything under control. Unless it's just best play to go bishop f7, rook c2, bishop b3. But what's the idea behind the bishop f7? No, I'm just saying... What's the idea behind rook c2 and back? Maybe white doesn't have a good move. He needs to square for the bishop, for the knight. Yeah. I'm always trying to spot threefold repetitions. I don't need reasons. I just play bishop f7, see what happens. But I don't think that's how yeah, Richie it's thinks. Psychologically, it's not an easy story for white. Yeah. No, bishop f7 doesn't look necessarily the best move at the same time if it's not the best then you blame yourself that why did you play without thinking right but looking okay. at it, you need to improve the pieces no like yeah this mo rook can't do anything because f6 is hanging the knight can't move so you can either move the bishop so the knight goes there or you can move this bishop so the queen can do something that's what i was thinking to move but the question is what happens if directly but also, can you take on b4? Also. F7. Queen d6. Back. Back. Rook f1. I'm scared. Rapport is thinking. But okay, he has to make only 
five more moves. No? No, that's our analysis. Uh, that's, yeah, position? eight moves. 32 works is seven. Eight moves and the price of a move is high, no? Like if you miss some detail here, you can e easily be lost with either side. Such a tense game. Incredible that this d4 bishop is controlling so much. <clears throat> The thing is that after bishop f7, I think king c6. Also after bishop h4, it feels like. Run away. He likes after everything. Yeah. Because you have to improve on your king. And the king, if it goes to b8, you improved a lot. Huge. So, Richie, about to make a move. What about uh, taking on e7? <clears throat> I never like it because then the king gets so weak I unless understand. there's... Queen f... Ah, queen e7. Queen f5. Can I run? Ah, you go there. <clears throat> no, this is very bad. Very bad. Rapport. Thinking. I think he's going to play. Oh, knight c4. I didn't think he was going to play that. Whoa. Wow. What a move. What's going on? Takes. He wants a check. Whoa, fantastic move. What a move, knight c4. Look at this. What is happening? B takes c4. D, D, D takes c4. Genius oh. move. Wow. Amazing move. If we take bishop c, bishop e5. Rook d4. Bishop c7. So king c6, but then also queen f6 and bishop c7. Game over. Ding took. D takes c. No. Unbelievable move. He needs a move. Yeah, wow. but bishop a4. Look at that. Bishop a4, c5. Let's see, six, c5. Well, your queen Oof. will be, it's gone. Queen f5, c5, queen f5, check, queen g6. Unbelievable. What a beautiful knight. Incredible move. Oof. Completely blowing open the, the nature of the game, which was already a complete mess. You see, uh, if he would have he played bishop f7 repeating, what a mistake he... He smelled it. Hmm. What an amazing move. Okay. But what can black do? Rook c6, bishop a4. Okay. Bishop takes, knight takes. If bishop takes, takes queen, bishop c6, king c6. Well, that's not nice. Hmm. Okay, so after rook c6, can you keep it? Okay, then all kinds of things disappear. Which should be five ideas. Hmm. <clears throat> if Bishop H four, hmm. 
I'll be brief. Yeah. Queen F7. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's it not is a bad. piece. Yeah. It is a piece. So let's see after rook c6. Mm -hmm. Things thinking. Rapper also at the board, completely focused. Stakes are high. Rook c6 is a tough move. It's tough to step into this, but okay, it's a priority to. If b5? No. You take or you take just an f6? But queen f6 if it's possible. C6. On c6. And then let's say queen f7. Bishop a4. Uh, blunder? Uh, I think so. Trying not Five to. Right next. That's unfortunate. So maybe a non blunder. Is this a non blunder? Bishop a4, king c7, right? Rook c6 mm -hmm. is there. Bishop a4 is on the board. It's happening. <clears throat> happening. Rook c6, bishop a4, and king c7. Thing is tough. Adjusted to the new reality. It's hanging in there. And he could just be much better as well, no? Quite as to... What well, their black has a huge advantage. And also, after bishop e7, the h5 square, there is no defense for white. If this the one black is very scary. Queen e6, queen g6. So Rapport takes on c6 directly, knight takes. Black has more material. He has to keep going. B5 or something. Yes, B5 course. on the board. At least it's the bishop that stops the mate still. Yeah, so what about knight B4? C5. Ale. Take, I guess. Take rook c1. Yeah. So queen e6. That could also just be winning. Either way, this is this is an amazing game, like but yeah. Complexity game of the tournament so far. For and me. it's not no over yet. But it's yeah. not over yet. What adventures they're having. So B5 doing a thinking. He could also take, but it feels strange to open the C5. But black can also take it actually, and then knight B4. What's then? Rook C1, King B7. <clears throat> and he played a move. What did he do? He went night before. Here we go. Okay. Allowing C5, but we didn't see a follow up after this Queen E6. Well, maybe C5, just simply Queen E6. Yes. But uh, I'm not sure if uh, I wouldn't favor a takes b5 first and only after that knight b4. Though then okay. maybe queen c4 was his problem. Yeah. And then the knight can get in. 
travel. Yeah. So you went night before the race? Sorry. If now C5. Played, queen e6 played. Six. Wow. Oh, the game. What about rook d4 takes queen f4? King. King b7, c6. Is it king a8? Yeah, worst case scenario takes, but let's try. Well, now, you know, queen c7. Isn't it game over? For whom? I don't know exactly. <laughs> well, queen a5, queen b6 is a draw. Ah, you have knight a6? Oops. Guess so. Hmm. Then this is not the one I wanted. So instead of queen c7, let me see. King e8. And what happens if instead of taking on d4, c6? Mm. Can I go here? Okay, go back. So this is the big question. So what about bishop h4? Yeah, that looks like a coming move to play. AB, queen takes, or some queen of eight is coming. Maybe just takes. I would take it back. Yeah. Because so very open. Hanging, yeah. Still a mess. The question is what happens on bishop c5? I think it's not good because of rook c1 and bishop d8 is there, right? Bishop h4 is the move, I think. Yeah. Who is better that I cannot give an answer? But I feel bishop h4 is extremely powerful. Ding is also feeling uncomfortable there, I think. It's just calculating. Can't rattle Ding. I like Bishop H4. It's important that Black cannot take the pawn. And if A, B, then Queen B5. Then the knight is hanging. Yeah, AB feels wrong. Though, okay. In but the, here, what happened? Bishop c5? Rook c1. Queen oh, d6. Queen d6. Queen c4. Knight Jump. D6. Bishop h4 played. By the way, after bishop c5, bishop d8 immediately is also maybe an option. Okay, somewhere. Oops. And then rook c1 maybe. Still this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bishop c5, rook c1. 
queen d6. Queen c4, what did you do? Ninety three. Okay, rook c3. Checking h2. How are the end games? Try to bail out. Well, probably that shouldn't be just bishop d4, b4. No. And if queen b5? I was hoping I could go here. But Queen a5, Queen b6. So no, Queen b6 there. is losing to rook c5, beautiful. Wow. King b7. Rook b3. What's the big deal? Black's turn is coming. Now, but this end game, at least white should, can't be worse. No, like I'm not getting... sure. What is the bishop on h4 doing? It goes here. B4. Yeah, probably. Bishop d4. Some sort of drawer. Yeah? Yeah. Should be a draw. Yeah. Uh, the Nakamura won. So ah, yeah, we neglected one. that, but it looked. Yeah, tough. it is so busy this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Ali Reza's night of risk taking continues to not. Yes, but okay, results. this was not that kind of night of where. Uh, I mean, we didn't expect him to get mated. No, but I still think GF6 is a tough decision, to put it mildly. Well, probably he's not experienced in these uh, positions at all. Well, no one is, and no one should be. The poor king just played with the queen. Um, well, no, but that was a tough game for Ali Reza. Not, a, not a good game for Ali Reza, for sure. Let's see uh, Fabiano's game. Until Ding is thinking of not a good game. What's the over under on computer evaluation? I'll say plus three. I also wanted to play say plus three, but then I go plus four. Oh no! By the no. way, is it so bad? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only one eighty-five. Fabi hanging in there. We should never write off Fabi. No, but maybe white should go. Oh, only 135. But what is this rook g2? That was the pawn. But I thought not? he wants to go with the queen. Ah, he had the queen on e2. How did it ah, he collapse? had much better, of course. Here it's plus 1000. Yeah, 96. Duda giving Fabi life. This is just resigns. Okay. Queen e2, queen g6, and rook d3 takes rook g3, queen e8. Again, 96. He keeps missing 96. Oh, but this is an God. easy one. This one I would spot. Come on. This is uh, strange to miss. This one's obvious. Whoa. We were so focused on the rapport ding game, we missed a lot of drama here, apparently. A, B, A, B, rook f6. Of course, white is still much better, but queen f1, queen h3, the queen is not even better there than when it But I it think from. You know, to put the queen on h3 is a huge misunderstanding. It's very strange, no? Like, it was perfect here. But yeah, seriously, like, he did everything right, finished the game, no? 96, that's... Doda, normally, if he didn't just score... 
half out of four in the candidates, he would play in every blitz game. That's shocking. Anyway. I mean, he's clearly doubting himself. Yeah, queen g2, and now he sees there's no... But look what is going on. Right, queen h3. Even this knight h7 trick, that was the idea. Right, h7, beautiful. So I should oh, wait a bit condemning his play, yeah? But rook but he f3, he yeah, can exchange a pair of rooks. This knight is finally alive. Fabi needed like yeah, 800 but still, rooks. No, but still, rook takes g6, rook g6, knight g5. I like that. And this week, yeah. yeah, it's still, still not fun. Oof, he would need a victory so much, like not for the tournament, but for his overall mood, confidence, and so on. If he blows that today, that would be that would be rough. Okay, white is still much better. One minute on the clock. Do that with eight. It's move 36. That's also this typical moment where probably he spotted after he made his move 96 was winning and now you're kicking yourself that you still have to win the game when it was already won and so on. Yeah. Not easy mentally. But okay, these are the situations that uh, you have to get over with that, right? And play and go for the what you have in the game. Ding Liren is thinking, thinking, thinking. I think he completely miss, missed Bishop H4 or un underestimated, but there is some very tough thing happening. <clears throat> okay, let's go here. What's the clock? Seven minutes for Ding. Two minutes for Richie. Now let's move 39. So Ding can take a moment to calculate if this works or not. Which, yeah. It's the responsible thing to do, no? Like stakes are so high. What else could he do? Ah, the computer says King B8. I don't know what kind of move is that. I would go C6. <clears throat> Computer says knight c2. Yeah, but this what kind of move? This is not happening. Yeah, this is probably <laughs> not happening. <clears throat> but as usual, he will be right. Takes queen c6. Yeah, but this is not a position where white should be worried, I think. Black has at least as many dangers. Yeah. Oh, this is a strange way to play. No, I think as a human, you calculate this line. No, here, queen d6. And uh, rook d1 is the best. Or queen e6. Still a mess. White can keep playing. Well, Ding went under six minutes. <clears throat> Black can go wrong very much. And it's frightening those two pawns there. Though I believe he will take one of them. Yeah. There is not much of a choice for black. Yeah, the pawns won't queen, but the king safety, it's... What about queen e8? Queen e8. C6 again. Well, maybe just a takes b5. <clears throat> And knight takes e6. So what is such a position? Don't know. What else is there? Takes queen f4, king b7. Similar to what we looked at. Maybe it's a better version. King b7. No, but here I think knight c6 simply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and queen takes. White is not losing this, is he? Maybe it's. Well, so. black for sure not losing this. <laughs> he has an extra pawn.
yeah, thing taking its time. Four minutes to go. In the meantime, Duda did take on G6 and go back. Rook F6 played by Caruana, still defending with all he has. Well, probably eventually he has to go knight f1, g3. Not the worst problem in the world, but yeah, it must be annoying that the game is still going on. And all of a sudden you have to start thinking if this knight will do something. Ding took. Back to ding. Took on c5. Here we are. Duda shaking his head. Yeah, he's not happy that this game is still raging on. But you can't blame yourself. You have to focus what is now and try to get the best. And he's frustrated about what was missed by him. And this is not good. Yeah. But everyone knows you shouldn't. It's very hard not to look like uh, if you missed all these moments. Do you think there's a strategy like you say, okay, I missed this. I'm allowed to be upset now for two minutes, but then I have to focus again. How, how do you cope with, with that? And there I he is. I think you have to. I think it's not a question. It's just Where's you have for? to force yourself to, and maybe to, to be honest, maybe meditation can help this kind of uh, mindset also. But I think it's, you cannot simply uh spent time because he played f4 look at duda he's so disgusted this game but what is, is f4 really f4 maybe and queen f3 right computer approves says it's still completely winning his face tells a different story but now he made move no no it's still move 39 he needs one more move but queen f3 and it's gone no But why is, I mean, really, I mean, look at the position. He still has a huge advantage. We can say that uh, it's probably winning somehow. It looks like he's about to resign. Yeah. It's like. No, but his tournament hasn't gone well. And now, yeah, I think he's sitting there kicking himself, thinking, might take C6, seriously. He went F takes five. Yeah. Okay. And after that, knight F3, and it's over, no? This knight? Why not the other knight? Ah, oh, sorry. I just heard knight F3. Hits the bishop. Yeah. What's the point? Which is six. Bishop e5 on the board. It's move 41. What's going on? It's just resigns? I think, or are we it's a something? piece, no? Fabi. Fabi does never give pieces. Yes, but he had nothing to do. I mean, he was just so... Let me just confirm. Yeah, it's over. Oh. It's a piece. That helps. It's pity because it looks like the best position Black had all game, but this ends the game nonetheless. Oof, there we see Karana. He probably understands what's going on. Yes, but just a minute ago, we had Duda who showed much worse faces and impressions. Yeah, let me see after this f4, because it looks like Corona here. Yeah. Okay, still in trouble, but he blundered something. Could have prolonged the game. Some queen e8. Who knows what happens? Yeah, but I'm not sure you want to prolong this game so much. Yeah, fair enough. I, it's hard to convince yourself that you're going to get away with this one. So Duda, 
should go to the bathroom, put some water on his face, come back, look at the position, pick up the bishop, win again. He looks so frustrated, but yeah, he does still take the bishop. Is he going this is to it. Ruin, ruin this game or is he going to accept that he ruined it but he still wins it? He will take the piece and then. Was he not going to win it? No, this was a very strange game by Caruana because he's, he's so fantastic in the openings, but today, yeah, his risk reward filter maybe was a little off. I think he lost his line once with white to Grishuk, so maybe he felt there were winning chances there, but he didn't manage to create them. In other news, they've made the time control. In... Okay, so what's the things here? Both games. Queen D6 on the board. Rapport can repeat if he wants to with Rook D1. That's of course, what I look for first. So, what to. is what is Queen C for? This is what we've looked right after that. What knight D three. Knight D three. Rook C three, and we looked at A B, and thought the end game was roughly equal or something like that. Could be other ways to do this as well for going for the end game. Incredible game. That's for sure. Computer has his own thoughts as usual. Here it likes this move. <laughs> Check and takes. Still equal. Queen D, uh, Queen D5, we didn't have. Here. Here. This is Compi speaking. It says everything's equal. Do whatever you like. Takes. Wow. Okay, just. Different game for Mr. Computer. Hmm. But let's see what he says before Queen C4. Yes, yeah, 0, 0, Rook D1, Rook C1. Or Queen C4, Knight D3, which should be 7 and D. And here there's Bishop D4, actually. So it's not forcing a repetition. Still anything could happen. Well, in this game, yes. Oh, sorry. Not here, but here. Oh, and it does say this is good for black. Okay. You you had that feeling. Well, it, I'm saying that it's only black who can win this. Yeah. But apparently it's winning too. The king is just too far away. We keep mm -hmm. the ball. Uh -huh. King A4. Not in time. Okay, so there's no bailout. That means Richie still has to has to do some work here. Either this queen c4, bishop e7, crazy lines, or rook d1, bishop d4, play that position. Anything could still happen. We have Duda winning a piece now against Caruana. He did not find the cleanest way earlier, but he will still win the game. I wonder if he'll be happy or if he'll be disgusted with himself that he missed, uh, like some easy wins, or both. Well, of course, it's not a nice uh, feeling and experience that you don't uh, finish the game much faster from that position, especially that 96, is not, it was not so difficult to yeah. find. So he has some blackout there too. 
I guess. Yeah, it was. But still. That's a rough one. But it wins a win, and you can still be disgusted with yourself and still a little happy that you finally Well, won. maybe he thought that uh, takes rook g3, rook f6. Or rook g8, yeah, yeah that's it. And then if you come back with the knight, then b takes a, and why do you... Uh, why should you let uh, black to have a past pawn? Yeah, maybe. Got a little too excited there. I mean, it's still, still checkmate. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but still, you have to calculate, uh, and you don't want to make any risk, let's say. All right. So he shouldn't be too harsh on himself. And Rapport. We'll need quite some time, I think, now to calculate after such a messy messy middle game before the time control. You still have this very messy position. And he'll take a moment. So we can take a moment as well. Go on a brief break. And then come back with this dramatic round where Jan Nepomnesi has everything working for him. He drew his game with the white pieces. Karana looks to be losing. And that would mean Nepomnesi increases his lead in this tournament even further. Garana now tight with Nakamura in the second space, second place, and Ding or Rapport would love to join them. Rapport on minus one, actually, so he can't get to plus one in this game yet, but Ding could winning his game. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Thanks for watching. is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 knight of I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. What do you think about this opening? Honestly, what do you think you about... You don't have to play knight c3. We can actually put a piece on d2, which is better, because then we avoid the potential doubling of our c pawns. What you have to understand about practical endgames as a whole is that, just like in the middle game or the opening, um, you cannot rely uh, solely on these general considerations. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same.
Welcome everybody! My name is Jan Nipomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Now anyone can learn and improve their chess skills with the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. The Magnus Trainer app is packed with fun mini games and interactive training content, playable anytime, anywhere. Get the Magnus Trainer, available in the App Store and Google Play. Okay, so let's send a challenge.
Welcome back, everybody. Round number 10 of the Candidates Tournament is still very much ongoing. We have two games running with Fabiano Carana being lost against Jan Krzysztof Duda, but not resigning yet. And the epic clash between Rapport and Ding entering its next phase. Jule Polgar, Richie thought for almost half an hour, then played Queen C4. 93 is on the board. What happens now? Well, that's a good question, what happens now. Because after knight d2, of course, uh, white cannot go rook d1 because of knight f2, right? Mm -hmm. So we're discussing rook, B, rook c3 before. Mm -hmm. And uh, how was it? Knight f2, king h2. And then... I think we tried without knight f2 to go a takes b5. Ah, yes, immediately to take b5, giving up the knight on d. Yeah, this was the main one. Because after knight f2, king h2, black can be maybe in trouble because king b6, bishop d8 mm -hmm. would be the problem. <clears throat> so the rapper goes rook c3. Is there. So after a takes b5, what about playing queen takes b5? Yeah, because we checked earlier that such an endgame was actually potentially dangerous for white. Not sure about the move order. But here, the white king is just so far away. It's only white who is uh, fighting for a draw, while after queen b5, for me, it's hard to believe that white can have problems. Because with the queen and rook, also on the side, the bishop is uh, uh, taking its role also, importantly. I think this should be okay for white. And this is what we were talking about, that queen a5, and the king has to move out. Let's say to b7, for example, and after rook b3, bishop b4, or knight b4 is the move, I guess. After b6, also bishop possible. B6 is also possible. To keep some mating attacks. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. Could also end badly for a report. That's true. Well, if white has to go queen takes d3, uh, then we have to look what is really exactly that position. Takes, takes, bishop d4. Let's say maybe bishop e7. And then bishop b7, bishop b7. The problem is for white that he cannot bring his king before exchanging the d4 bishop or sacrificing the rook, right? Yeah, it's surprisingly rough disposition for white. Maybe not surprisingly. Because the king is stuck forever. Yeah. Exactly. And if instead of bishop e7, bishop f6... That's what then, we looked at here, here. Yeah, and the problem is that rook d4 is not going to be a draw because the king is too far away. Mm -hmm. That will never improve while black has easy enough ways to make progress. No, this is potentially dangerous. Or it is dangerous. So actually, a takes b5... Queen of seven, king b6 is nothing. Can black go actually queen d4 instead of bishop a6? Check. King b7. Queen b5. Mm -hmm. But maybe I could go king b8. Sorry. I go king b8 instead. Ah, here you want to go king a8. Works. <clears throat> I have a threat. Well, you have some threat, yeah, on g1. Some small. Seems to work. D4. Hmm. 
So Rapport would have to go for the ending. Well, it's not so promising, I guess. AB5 played. Very difficult situation for Rapport after taking the knight. But probably it seems so. There is nothing better than that. And we checked with the computer earlier. He played this move, rook c3, quickly. But there was still, still a chance to bail out with this. Which, according to Compi, it's equal still. But after rook c3, queen the a b5 is a problem, yeah? It's bad news, yes. Switch it on. Yeah. This is a problem. If queen b5, computer doesn't care. Ah, he just wants to take just on it. Takes. E4. Also fair. Yeah. Queen d3, this is what will happen most likely. Bishop d4, I guess, is the key move to lock everything out. And it's gonna be gonna be a struggle. Speaking of struggle, is Fabiano still struggling? Well, he's just a piece down. We should give Rap not not Rapport do that credit by the way for this move f4 or move 39. Nice. That's move. not such an easy move to make. With so everything because after that e f also e5, I guess. Five, bishop e5, and, and queen f3. Ah, queen f3. Or maybe not f3. It was also <laughs> winning. Yeah. And game over. And if rook takes f4, knight takes e6 once again. Everything's hanging. So now, yeah, Fabi is desperately looking for some counter chances, but. But he's not doing it badly. He's still somehow kicking, right? Yeah. Still. So what is the best move for white here? Knight. Attack. Ah, oh, so simple. Well, it's hanging, but it's. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Mm. It's not. It, it's maybe the computer tells it to that it's plus I don't know five. Mm. But it's still, there are checks around. Yeah, this is the human way, I think. It's also the computer way. <laughs> and somehow, yeah. No, but that nothing is hanging. There is no yeah. check, right? You want to simplify, exchange the queen or something. <clears throat> yeah, this looks more controlled. <laughs> Although here, once again, Adventures. Did you have to go knight c6? You're kidding. No, I'm just reading the first line. I have no idea. But this is uh, crazy. Fabi is one of the toughest fighters out there. But it's a knight. In other news, Ikaru Nakamura checkmated Ali Reza after Ali Reza. Took it excessive was a risks. Nice, nice maneuver to play rook a3 and rook g3. Nakamura That's played the, this kind of plan against Ding in the in the Spanish, but of course that did not work out as this one. But still, he had some attack against Ding in there too. But I always like to say that I think people underestimate the horizontal moves with the rook. Open files. Yeah, that's very common, uh, easier, right? Easier, but have... open ranks, not so common. Yes, yeah. On the ranks, uh, we are not playing as much, not even nothing to compare. I think maybe, what can it be, 10%? Yeah, Especially unless there are some pawns in the way. Unless it's an end game, and of course, we, we treasure and appreciate a lot the seventh rank. That is something that we highlight always. That one we've heard of, but the yeah. third rank gets no but credit. That's... Yeah, let's say fourth rank to play rook a5, rook g5, or rook a4. 
But okay, three is still sometimes there are some lines where it is pattern and it's part of the opening, right? But um, it can be a great surprise and successful yeah. plan. Not sure if Alireza was surprised here, but there was no, no way out by its execution. Well, this is why nobody should allow to have such an F5 knight to the opponent. Yeah. Nothing good can be cooked out of there. In the meantime, uh, we simplified the position Richard against Dingley Ren. Bishop d4 was played. And my prognosis is not very positive for Richard. And what a game! What a game we've seen in this game. What an idea. I think this game is the most, which had the most unexpected moves and ideas. Yeah, it's been... I mean, this is quite okay, sides. right? G5, knight, h5 is a, is a very normal thing. Then a3, rook, b8. And then this rook, b7, rook, c7 plan. I've never seen something like this before. The adventures were far from over, like every move. We weren't sure who's better and why both sides with so many ideas. Rapport sacrificed the pawn. Then goes F4. Here, Ding here plays his insane move, F6. Like F6 opening is, king. But maybe it was a must already. Maybe otherwise black is in big problems because castle uh, F5. Yeah, we, we had this line. It was, yeah, computer says it's better for white, F5. Yeah, so F6, it was a desperation, which tells a lot yeah so anyway f5 maybe was the move this is what compi has to say and knight e4 with a nice position the, still, uh, the rook on the seven is way. half good yeah hmm? it's open rank the seventh rank for the rook it's quite useful Yeah, no, an absolutely crazy game, and every decision seems to be tough. No, rook f8, none of the moves is. Obviously, gives this pawn because queen d6, queen f1. No, he doesn't take. Rapper also incredible. with all of six stuff. Here, maybe he almost blundered this rook c1. Probably. But, but controlled himself, went back. Rapport continues with his next and same move, queen, right to c4. How was it knight c4? What was the best? To go back to f7 or to go back? We should have seven zeros here. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe Dink set a cunning trap, but I don't think so. I think he missed bishop b3 and then I controlled also himself. And knight c4, which looked amazing, but Ding, I think, made all the right moves here. Rook c6, best move. King c7. Takes. I know here, computer wants a, b, and knight a5. They played knight b4, c5. What a game! Bishop h4. Four, another great move. Takes rook c1. And now, Compi says, Enough, guys. Repeat moves already. But rapport continues. King h2 was also possible. Continues and goes for this end game. And according to the computer, rook c3 is the decisive mistake. Bishop e7 kept the game balanced. Takes, takes. Yeah, but these moves are so difficult. First of all, difficult to judge and evaluate the consequences. For example, the one what happened at first, we thought that it might be just a simple draw. Yeah. And then to realize it that what is possible to play like bishop e7 previously shown no completely insane game credit to both players amazing stuff but it looks now if ding spots this plan which he probably will that he will have the happy ending so why is it a win king g1 the king is just too far away king f2 yeah, that's the problem, that you don't just push the b-pawn and king a3, because then I would be in time with king c1. The problem is that king e3, king uh, b4, yes. Yes, king c2, bishop c5, but b4, and it 
apparently. It's so far from simple. Hold on. In this position, bishop c5, king c3. Hmm. And what about not bishop c5, but king d2, is it wrong? King Even c1. this is lost still. Ah, because bishop b7 takes, and then we have the pawn break. Oh. Let's show this e5, b3. We wait. She comes, we wait. And takes e6 also e4 doesn't does nothing and black is first two past pawns is too much Whew. What not is easy but they will calculate this once once they get there like, uh -huh. You know, it's very strange that uh, young Christoph Duda spends incredible amount of time in the winning position he has. Just wants to make sure nothing bad happens. Well, I don't know if he recovered his, uh, his mistakes, what probably he realized already on the way after missed them. Yeah, he still looks annoyed. He looks annoyed. He looks heavy. Yeah, tired. Punch drunk. Yeah. Like but. he, he seems that he's confused. But if he wins today, his tournament is not such a disaster. No, he'd be on minus two, which yeah, I'm sure wasn't his expectation. But <clears throat> it's not the end of the world at all. But he's thinking already for like, what, uh, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, he's taking his time. No, it's only 10 minutes that he's thinking. It just seems very long. Absolutely. Ding also thinking now, but he just started. King B6 is a logical move, though. There's no, no need to rush with this pawn. Ah, even rook c3? Yeah. Well, of course, not with the pawn, but bishop b7 is also just seems to be as good taking the e4 pawn. No, at least. Why so why time is time to bring the king? But I don't take on e4. No, I don't take on e4. What happens? Okay. King c6, king g1, b4, king f2, king c4, king b5, king e3, king c4. Why is this different? Why so is isn't this the same? Five, king d2. King b3. Ah, here the king. Ah. Oof. Eight. Ah, yeah. This is a draw. <laughs> yeah. So if the king goes away, then we use the king to defend against the people. And we hold. Okay, some temptations for Ding. Mm -hmm. But why? Mm. He keeps waiting. He doesn't care. Oh, sorry. Where should we send? No. But what? Why is this a draw? Because Bishop e seven. But if if Black was able to play h four, it's also not winning. Not. Yeah, the problem is that black cannot reach to A2, right? Mm. But these are uh, difficult lines to calculate. That was the difference, especially if you start calculating bishop B7 and you don't necessarily understand what is the difference between bishop B7 and king B6. This one's winning. But you, the you other one, know. two pawns up, is not. <laughs> yeah. So king b3 and b4. And king b6 played. Ding is sharp. Yeah, something switched yesterday with his victory. Yeah. This is just winning. The key is the king doesn't make it here ever. Yeah, but he could, uh, we could make it there 
but still king on a2, pawn on b3 is a win. Yeah. So the black king has to get here. Poor Rapport, after such a tough game, maybe he doesn't even know what went wrong. Now all of a sudden he's, he's lost. Because yeah. it didn't look like he made any obvious mistakes, no? I mean, the computer told us, yeah, he takes on d4. There was nothing else if you don't go for this. Can't just wait for well, the to only improve. question is, well, I don't think Dean can ruin this and not the win. I don't see any chance. I think he has it all figured out now. Yeah, king a5 is not taking time. Well, obvious enough move. So what could he miss now? But this is just winning, and then you. Well, he's not going to miss h5, h4. No, looks like it's over. Well, very instructive endgame. And if we look at the cross table, all of a sudden, the race for second place is completely open. The Pomnishi is sitting pretty one and a half points ahead, but Karana five and a half, Nakamura five and a half. Ding will fi have five and a half. And it's it's anybody's guess who finishes second, which, as mentioned, gives a very, very serious chance for playing the next World Championship match. Who's your favorite, assuming Nepomneshi wins? Who do you think is most likely? And which match would you most like to see? Well, I can tell you that if Ding wins this game, which... He will. It means that he's tying for second after an incredible awful tournament which he had in the first half of the event, right? Yeah. So I would still maybe put my my bet on on thing that he can make it to become second after yeah. he just started to win games in time for being second, right? He's the one with the, the most, momentum. Uh, most uh, Funny would be for me is if Nepo plays against Hikaru. Because for chess and for the fun of it, that must be something a completely different chapter, I think, in chess. Thinking about the fact that uh, Nakamura is the most popular streamer himself. And also he's working with, he has contracts with very serious uh, companies and uh, and he's so much in the esporting world, right? So maybe that would uh, make it on a on a on a different uh, uh, well, I can't say different level, but definitely it would be something very different world championship match. At the same time, I always say that I I still hope that Magnus will be defending his uh, his title against Napo or whoever is going to be winning. And uh, but also Fabi would be interesting, but I think uh, I would uh, I would say that Dink has great chances then. Yeah. No, but if you're Magnus, let's say Nepomneshi finishes first, Nakamura finishes second. Can you really sit on the sidelines and watch the Nepomneshi Nakamura match with all the media attention, the um, USA versus Russia or versus Fide? With Nakamura and his million followers, will Magnus just sit at home saying, Okay, yeah, you guys Magnus, find it out? Good luck, sure. Karo becoming world champion. For sure, uh, Magnus, if he says he doesn't want to defend his title, he would definitely go for a commentator seat. Maybe, maybe he'll just, yeah, do commentary and enjoy himself. So he would say that, Well, he can take part in another role. Um, well, of course, we've heard uh, Magnus saying already since 2016, I think, when he played against Karyakin. Then later on, when he played his uh, title match against Fabiano, that actually it was so difficult for him. And he didn't have this, this uh, feeling that he wants to play the match. At the same time, when he thought about the fact that what happens if he's not going to be called world champion, that was a frustration that he didn't like. Yeah, so that, he... 
And also, would he like it if he's a commentator and then the next world champion is Hikaru Nakamura? Like the the tables turn, no? Magnus becomes the <laughs> the streamer. And Hikaru, well, it's a little break from classical chess. Got a million tw- followers on Twitch. Now it's time to become world champion. Like that's that's a tough one for him. I don't know. Well, but I also love Ding, and I felt going into this tournament, he's the strongest player. So it's good to see him catching some momentum. Um, but yeah, attention wise, of course, it wouldn't be the same as a Nakamura in Pomnishi match. Well, uh, for sure, there are a lot of excitement ahead of us, I think. And, uh, well, I don't know if Magnus knows it already, whether what will be his decision. I was very surprised when I heard it for the first time. I tell you that when I heard it for the first time, I just couldn't believe it. I said, no, it's some joke. And then they told me, no, no, it's not a joke. And uh, and, uh, I was kind of uh, shocked that he might be serious about that. At the same time, it is very understandable that to defend his title in every two years, it is extremely hard. And mentally, it uh, it makes you think about that, which which is not much fun, right? I mean, he's he's really a tournament player. He likes to be challenged in every game against someone else. And, uh, and that is why also he's number one for so long. He's like 10 years already number one in the world, I think, or maybe more already. And... Uh, Clearly, to to play a match, it needs a completely different mindset. And when you're always the favorite, it has an extremely heavy uh, he- heavy uh, weight on your shoulder. And How was it for you? There must have been offers over the years to play world championship matches. Um, did you think it's not interesting sporting-wise? You didn't like a match or both? How was it? <laughs> well, for me, I didn't play the World Championship match because somehow I grew up being so much ahead of other ladies. Like, uh, I was number one in the world in the ladies' ranking at the age of 12. And then I was there, staying there for more than 25 years. And it was somehow, as I was raised by my parents, that... Uh, that we are just playing chess to get be- as, as good as possible, this meant to be playing in the open section. It was something I, I didn't understand why should I be doing. I made good results. I was in the top 10. I was earning money. Everything, the way I, the, my parents uh, raised me, I was completely fine with that. And I was very happy that I, I had this life that my parents... Uh, had this attitude and they didn't limit me and somehow I felt to play in the world championship match it's a must that I have to win and what do I gain that much when I'm there already for 10 years or 15 years being number one with a huge gap with the with the next uh, ladies so no, no one ever questioned you're the best female player in the world so yeah maybe it it wouldn't have done much anyway. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, I mean, basically, that's the that's the the only title I didn't win. Somehow, I didn't want it to make a detour, and I don't know. Maybe I would have screwed it up, and I would have uh, uh, didn't win. But I think for a long time, for there is most likely I would have been a match. We can. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right, Ding brought the king, and it's over. Yeah, this, I don't think it's difficult for him. He will put the king on a2, pawn on b3. Then pick up this pawn. If the e5 pawn stays, or if the pawn goes to e6 even or not, doesn't matter. The bishop stops it, and then h5, h4. And black wins. It's over for Richie. After, this might be the best played loss we've seen in the tournament, because it really didn't do anything stupid. He was creative, had a lot of interesting ideas. And in a way, he got very unlucky that after... Well, if we would give a prize for the most interesting, exciting, and uh, unexpected game, probably yeah. it's this one yeah. by far. Oh, yeah. Sporting wise, you could have other ones the Nakamura versus Karana game, the first Nepomnishi Karana, and so on. But for pure chess content, this one I think is hard to beat. 
So what happened in the, still it's going on with uh, Fabiano, he's still the fighter, but Rook A2 happened. This is not something we looked, we looked some other, it's, it's nice the way he wants to win, Rook A8 check. So if King G7, Queen G2, yes, or Rook G6, Queen G6. Yeah. And uh, queen d3, rook a8, king h7, knight g5. Not here? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I moved before eight. instead of king g7. Here, yeah, here we go, king, queen. This is probably my There, king. check, rook g8. West ah, West okay. West. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> So after rook e8, king h7, knight g5. Yes. But after nice rook a2, can't black go rook g6, let's say? Doesn't seem enough. There's no checks here, rook g3, queen e6. Yeah, yeah. No, Duda's going to make it. Rook A2 is nice showing that he's still calculating. Yeah, it seems that it's very nice. We finished at the end, but it was, it was difficult. Yeah. So we're, we're near the end. Got to feel bad for Richie. It's interesting, or I don't know. It's, of course, by far the most human move. But he, after the time control, he had a lot of time. And after knight d3, he blitzed out this move, rook c3, which looks like the only good move, but it's actually the losing mistake. Huh? Which, even yeah. if you don't like the position after bishop e7, it was but the only this chance. Is, this is also an interesting thing. How do you know that what is a critical moment in a game? How do you know? Yeah, I think it's... It's experience. And here he probably just thought he was making the only legal move, so you don't spend time on it. Like the only move that's not losing immediately. But turns out, after an amazingly played game by both sides, Bishop e7 would have been the sort of just outcome. Queen e7, Queen d3, and equality. While his only real mistake, Rook c3. And Which is the most the obvious ends, move. By far, yeah. It's not like it's a mistake where you think, oof. That one's bad. Our little program agrees it's bad, though. I have to restart it because it froze here trying to play rook c3. Um, so I'll do that. I think we have a question of the day. Maybe you can tell us the answers to the question of the day. Do we have it in, in writing yet? There we are. So if you could add a rule to feed a candidate, what would you propose? This is the big question, right? Well, it's a, I think it's a, it's a question for a long time that how to change chess to make it more exciting, but still at the same time, keep it fair enough that uh, we are going to be having the best candidate who is going to be the challenger of the world champion, right? So this is, uh, I don't know, I was uh, not thinking about this closely. Um, of course, it's always a debate whether the time control is it good. But I think so far the players are pretty much happy with the time control that, uh, well, it's pretty long. There was one adjustment right now that if there is a tie for first place, then uh, there would be a playoff. So things would happen and decide over the board, not in uh, all kind of secondary uh, calculation, like what was the result against each other and uh, others. Uh, what would I change? Um, I, I don't know. I would have to think. It's a it's a question to be answered with responsibility. Yeah. 
No, I like the changes they made. I think, yeah, the tie break, everyone's in favor. That you don't have this stupid Sonneborn Berger or whatever. If two players have the same number of points after 14 rounds, have them play a tie break. I also like that the time control is no longer this increment from move one, but that we have some real time controls with two hours 40 and you can use your time as you want. So I think those are excellent. I got nothing. I would Do change you- the dress code that white sneakers are allowed as long as I like the white sneakers being worn. And that, I think it's an excellent event. Do you see what happened in, in Fabi's game, Night of Two? Yeah, I don't understand why, Amazing. but it did happen. It's a funny move. But it's fantastic. Try to confuse uh, Duda. I'm very confused. Well, you have a piece up, but still. Understood. <laughs> okay, Rook F2, you have to go. Queen D3. I don't know, Queen G3 or something, but it's not over yet. You can still hang on for some time. Check. King G7. King G7. And there's a... Check. A Gegenschach, as we say in German, on G4. Hmm. If takes. Queen takes, yeah? I guess so. There is no other capturing. Okay, but this is still work. Not so many pawns left. Well, of course, it's a win. That's not a question, but uh, White has to work still. And probably he thought that finally, finally, it's over. Never. This is still an annoying position. I can go clean D6. Still work. Yeah. Fabi is tricky. Fabi is fighting until the very end because he knows that this half a point, he needs it so much. Absolutely. So much. Do you think he will save it? No. I think it's too much. Even if they get an end game like that with a knight against a uh, rook and knight against a bunch of pawns, that I think is. Duda should convert. I think still he has like 5% to save it. Yeah, that's fair. And here you B3, let's exchange more pawns. Takes, takes, king f6. You yeah, yeah. only an h pawn left. Okay, should be winning, but. But it's not even so easy, I think. No. King e5. Rook f2 is played. Mm-hmm. Queen d3. Is there a knockout here? And of course, Queen generally d4. speaking, it's very easy to criticize generally the rules of the candidates of the World Championship match, of uh, different uh, parts of the, of the cycle. But when it comes to the fact that, okay, say what is fair, and what makes it better and good, and it would fit to everybody, then it's already a very different story. For example, with the World Championship match, I think that needs uh, better changes than the candidates itself. Because somehow, if, if if, if two players are really very, very close, like with Magnus, it was uh, with Fabi, and it was very unpleasant when it was with Karyakin because Karyakin was number 11 or or something like that or maybe he was not a top 10 player when he was challenging uh, in the world championship match uh, Magnus but he he simply has this style which makes it impossible almost to win Yeah, impossible I would disagree with I agree with all the prep and people come with the most solid repertoires it's very hard but in the match against Kayaki, Magnus had winning positions in games three and four. And even against Fabi, there were plenty of winning positions. I think we got a little unlucky that we had it played out to be all these draws. So, of course, that narrative. Well, is- I don't know if we can get unlucky in, uh, what was it, 24 games, two times 12 games. Well, but that's what I'm saying. That it, it's so many draws, like both, uh, both sides had plenty of winning positions, like... Yeah, but I just want to say that maybe it's not just about luck. 
It's about the environment they, they, they stay in the World Championship match that you have half a year or five months to prepare. So your mindset is really completely transformed for that. So all every, every part of your body is tense and already focusing so much on the on the result and that you know exactly that you want to fill your senses that whenever there is a danger you immediately go to a draw so i think because of this many months of preparation going on the players already they are their mind is hijacked in some way that even winning positions they don't win because they know and they respect the other ones so much that sometimes they they are not able to convert it I mean, also, uh, also when Karyakin took the lead and after that he could just make a perpetual check a draw, it wouldn't be a problem in the blitz game. He was not able to, to do it at the board because he just he had, had a blackout, right? No, of course, that happens. Uh, <clears throat> with the stress of the competition, I'm just saying these 24 draws or however many it were, those, yeah, and... I'm not sure we didn't get well, a little unlucky because it's because yeah, we had, uh, <laughs> yeah, be, yeah. I said it wrong because Karyakin, there was one uh, one victory for each. Yeah. It's... Yeah. No, but of course it's also understandable. Magnus not enjoying the process to play against another super solid Petro for Berlin or whatever it is repertoire, and then to have to, have to make something happen there. Well, long yeah. time ago, long time ago, the world champion had a draw odd, right? Yeah, I always thought that was strange. Do you want to bring it back to make it? No, no. Hard? I also think that it's it's somehow very strange. But they had it even uh, with Kramnik Lako, right? Yeah. That was and and for a long time they had that, which I never understood. That already, if a world champion is there and he does not have to go during the, all the steps to reach to the final, it's already an advantage, right? But for a long time, it was kept that way. Was it Magnus who brought it in that it, uh, it, the, the world champion doesn't have? No, it was before, no? Like in Vichy Gelfand, they played a tie break and so on. But I think Magnus has always been against this. Yeah. Um, against these odds, even before he was world champion. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's going to be very curious how it plays out. I'm biased because I'm such a fan of the classical matches. Um, and what do you even think, if there are many draws? What do you think about the fact that they in- increase the number of games from 12 to 14? No, well, I think that makes sense in a with the idea of yeah, having the price of one game being a little less high, so you can take somewhat more risks early on. And maybe it's also to tire the players out even more because it's the same distance. No, the same length, just fewer rest days. So it's 14 games instead of 12 in the same number of days. And the more tired the players get, the more decisive results and mistakes you will get, which we also had in the Carlson Nepomnishi match, where all of a sudden the draw <laughs> draw flurry ended. <laughs> well, it started with that in the first five. Exactly. But it didn't last. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm a fan, but of course it's a problem if the world champion is no longer a fan of participating. That's also bad news for chess. As much fun as a Nakamura and a Pomnishi match would be. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, that would be a big loss for chess if Magnus decides yeah. not to play. No, it's different if the guys retire, let's say. When the Kasparov retire, age 43 or something, or from classical chess and Kramnik also in his in his early 40s. But Magnus is, what, 31? That would be quite early, no? But, but he's not planning he's, to retire. He just... No, no, I understand. But, uh, if they stop playing world championship matches, no, no, of course he will stick around. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I would guess for his chances of playing a match, maybe this Nakamura second could, could help them. But Nepomnishi finishing first, that would be rough. It would be the one guy he just played and beat very clearly, then to motivate to do it, to do it again in a short time span. Not sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. We can ask him. Yeah, there's, there's rumors that he will also be going to Madrid. I'm going tomorrow, seven in the morning, I'm flying to Madrid. Oof. Mm -hmm. Early flight. Not much sleep after these games. No. <clears throat> we'll see in what shape I arrive there tomorrow. I think the game finished. Yeah, and this is over. You could still stop the pawn, but it doesn't change the result. It becomes the same mechanism we've seen already. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, it doesn't matter. Black gets a queen first. Or yeah, different color bishop is also very interesting in end games. Yeah, not enough for the draw here. I was not appreciating it that much when I was a kid, and I thought that every different color bishop endgame is a draw, no matter how many pawns you're down. But then I had to realize that, well, not all of them. It, it's true that some of them. What is this that, oh, yeah, the computer says it's balanced position. Oh, no, I switched it off. It's just... Uh... Uh, <laughs> but actually, it's not. I mean, nope. really different color bishop, one tempo here and there, and then it's just switching the evaluation. Yeah. So what's here? He gave up the pawn, d6 and e6. Should still be winning, but... Well, um... it's, it's very easily winning, I guess, because uh, king will come to f4, knight g5, and then... No, no, no. It's white to move rook e6. That helps. Yeah. So okay. this way it's not going to last long either. That's not very yeah. exciting then. Yeah. Be... There's no wrong knight for your h pawn. Wrong bishop could exist. With the knight, you need some very special constructions to make this a draw. Not impossible. Put a pawn on h7, exchange rooks, knight on g5. Yeah. But... <laughs> There is always Unlikely. a way to, to ruin your winning position, <laughs> no matter how winning we are, right? Yeah. Not going to happen to Jan Shishtov. Fabi is still hanging in there, though, like trying to stop the king from advancing. But okay. At this point, it should be easy for Duda. Not for me. How do you do it? 95? Rook e4. Mm -hmm. Check. King h7. You still sound confident. King h6. Will I hang the knight? It's possible. Well, yeah, probably knight d6. <laughs> Maybe the easiest. <laughs> still hope for white. Yeah. He will manage. Rook d5 yeah. played, just wants to go rook d4. Also not or a bad plan. D4. Or knight d4. Knight d4, yeah. Then bring the king, go check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it is very painful for black to, to play this position, but the whole game was very unpleasant for Fabi. Something really went wrong. Well, probably this g5, h5 whole plan was uh, something which he will not repeat again. Yeah. No, I don't think he will repeat this line. I mean, I've been talking about it too much, but I really dislike these lines. When black has a6, push a7, and white can grab the space, they're fine if you played a5. Like here. These positions, I think, are okay. But with white having the space and always this looming b5, just not a fan at all. And surprised. Carola went for. Anyway, we're nearing the end. Well, there are a few ways of of winning it. There is not only one. Starts with ninety four. That's a strange one. Allowing rook to one check, but probably good enough. I want to give checkmate. Is this checkmate. I think it's. Mm. <laughs> I'll find a way not to win. I'm not sure it's a checkmate. <laughs> yeah, <me neither. clears throat> 
but he could go king e5 and then the h4 pawn was protected. Here after rook g4, king e5. Mm -hmm. That helps. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. King f4 is on the board already. Yep. It's also Long the type of move that makes you want to resign now, like when King gets out. Well, it's already a miracle that uh, he could escape as far as this. Because it seemed like 15 moves ago or 20 that uh, Black will get mated or some huge material loss. Here, of course, is uh, a piece is enough. But still, it's possible to hang on for a few more moves if he wants, but he doesn't, and he resigned. Yeah. So Duda what wins his first game. So now everybody won a game in the candidates tournament. It took them 10 rounds, but everybody won at least one game. So in the second half of the candidates, it started to be a little shaken up more risk taken by the players and also nerves probably yeah and today well, especially black took huge risks to mix it up worked well for ding although ding i'm not even sure if he took risks i think he just played his normal style he just started playing excellently no wins the game against rapport who also played well and ali reza and fabi were not rewarded for their um risk taking Fabi with the line he chose and then pawn to g5 and Ali Reza also playing the knight off and then choosing gf6, both going for very sharp positions, but it backfired. So that means if we look at the standings, Jan Nepomnesi is what? One and a half points ahead of three players all of a sudden. Fabi Akarana, Hikaru Nakamura and Ding Liren all on five and a half. Absolutely. What what an incredible fight going on for the second place right now. And of course, we shouldn't forget what happens if there is a one bad day for Jan and he's losing, let's say, because, of course, those players who are right behind him for fighting for second place, obviously, they are again going to be waking up and say, first of all, it's Ding who could not even dream of anything like that until this point because he was playing bad, he was scoring bad, so he could not even have a dream. Then we have Hikaru, who also played pretty well, but still uh, he didn't have enough points uh, so by now he was not hoping that much, but now he sees that as Fabi lost, then he caught him again. So this is something, again, probably he has incredible motivation. And for Fabi, of course, they have the same point. He's absolutely shocked right now, I'm pretty sure, that simply, oh my God, what happened? I had such a lead front of uh, uh, the third uh, player, and now I'm just openly playing for the second place and even the second place is not sure for him it's not secured at all yeah he scored half out of three out of his last three games that's that's rough for Karana. tomorrow we have another big big game coming up Karana with the white pieces against ding liren and yeah if someone wins that of course it means a lot for the tournament as well we also have nakamura versus rapport Richie, after his loss today, he's now fallen to shared last place because Duda won. So he's shared last with Ali Reza and Duda. Ali Reza playing Nepomnesi with White. We'll see if Ali Reza's spirit is unbroken and he still tries to defeat Nepomnesi, which could also backfire because he's not in great shape. And then we have Rajab of Duda. Very interesting battles. For sure. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow if I make it to Madrid. It's still very unclear from where <laughs> I'll be joining the show, but I'm still very much looking forward to it. I will be here with you and with the audience. So I will be following from the same place so far. Sounds good. Thank you so much for watching. Stick around for the Banter Blitz with Benjamin Glidura, your countryman, today, I believe, at 9 p.m. And See you guys tomorrow. Enjoy chess. See you tomorrow.
the Grunfeld is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 Knight of. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. No, it's just to move. 